So far in season 10, you and I have driven not one, but two Porsches, a BMW, hybrid Roadster, a Lexus, and a couple of Mercedes. Now it's time to go to an auto show, specifically Chicago. Wait a minute. Everybody else is opening up their Chicago auto show videos from here. I got a better idea. For some reason, here just seems so much more comfortable, don't you think? So today, this is going to be a bit of a different episode. It's going to be a hybrid auto show video as well as an Ask Moto Man episode. What we're going to do is we're going to go through the McCormick Place here in downtown Chicago, look at some of the reveals here at Chicago, but also cover some cars that you and I didn't get to in Detroit because we were driving this in Spain. Uh, but we're going to bring in some surprise guests, actually some that are not surprises. These are some old friends of the show, so Jill Simonello, Scotty Reese, Craig Cole, and there may be one surprise guest in there as well. And we're going to do this, talk about cars, but answer some of your questions as well. So get your questions ready while we go through the 2019 Chicago Auto Show. Welcome to Chicago and the Chicago Auto Show. Here with Craig Cole of Auto Guide. Thank you for having Welcome, me. Welcome, sir. And the view. The view is stunning. You finally got that penthouse suite. I would like. Okay, for. a little bit of inside baseball here, and this is no exaggeration. I've been coming to the show for nine years now, and I have been in the basement for all of those nine years. I literally had to say, "Hey, Corey, that's a woman kind of sets this whole show up." Do you think I could get a room that actually sees the city? Maybe not. Because they were putting you in tents before, right? <laughs> It was shanty town yeah. before, exactly. Hooverville yeah. for the journalists. Yeah, I had to yeah. literally get like a parka. Yeah, my brother <laughs> works at Columbia, so oh. I got a special employee discount there on the go. parka. But I'm very excited to be here. Glad because to be. I, I I'm very excited to share this with you because usually this is kind of a sleepy show. And this year... Historically, yes. Yeah. Historically, there's been a lot going on. This is rivaling Detroit, I feel. Oh, I would I mean, argue, well... I'm a little bit biased because A, I didn't go to Detroit, and B, there is a Miata 30th anniversary edition here in a very odd color. We'll talk about that later. Mm -hmm. And up. then there is a, uh, an LC500 convertible. You're but all about that. I know those are fancy things. Do you think we should just roll into the first car that we went and shot yesterday? Why not? Okay. Let's so just so you guys on. understand, the format's going to be a little bit different on this Ask Moto Man that I'm sharing here with Craig Cole. Jill Simonello is going to join us. You know her from many NBC affiliates around the country. You know, she's like a big deal now. Like she's I remember spreading when, like a pandemic. I remember when she was just in trunks of cars, and now she's on TV <laughs> That's everywhere. Her that, that is her That is her shtick, yeah. literally. And then we Your have Scotty trunk. Reese joining us. She's very, mm. uh, she is more, she's more regal. She, <laughs> she has taken over Are the world. Are you suggesting right? Jill is not proper? Well, she has red hair. Oh, oh half was... red hair. But oh, anyway, yeah. the, the format today, I don't know if you know the format, because uh, you guys may have seen us do uh, live broadcasts before. Mm -hmm. uh, we do walk around with Craig on the Auto Guide channel, which is where they could find you. But here, what we're doing today is we're talking in a controlled environment here, taking your questions. So get your questions ready and share them with us in the comments here, and we will answer your questions. Craig I will be, be reading monitoring them. them on the internet connectivity machine over here. Oh, is that what that is? They're coming in via punch card. Keep in mind, this man drives a 1936 Ford mm -hmm. and actually chose to do so. All of my music is on Edison wax cylinder. He's not funny. But anyway, <laughs> get your questions ready. We're going to answer your questions. But in between us talking, we actually did go to the show floor yesterday and we shot a bunch of the new cars that were revealed. So let's go TJ to the first car, which is the 2020 Volkswagen GLI. It was last fall you and I flew to the thriving metropolis of Raleigh, Durham, North Carolina to drive a Volkswagen with a torsion beam rear suspension and a trunk. Um, I wasn't excited going into that trip, but was pleasantly surprised because it actually drove pretty well. And interestingly, yeah, it's a handsome car. I mean, it's not a GT3, obviously, but the reality is uh, it's a good value. And I sat down with the uh, program manager of the Jetta for Volkswagen of America, and he did indeed confirm this was coming, and this is the GLI. Here it is now at its world debut at Chicago. Now, a couple of things make this different besides the funky paint, which we'll get back to. Uh, independent rear suspension, so it fixes that torsion beam. Uh, and then you kind of knew this was coming, just like you knew that a GLI is a really bad secret. Um, 
This has the two liter inline four cylinder direct injected gasoline turbocharged engine from the GTI, but I honestly thought they were gonna make this a little bit less, make this the 210 horsepower to separate it from the GTI, but instead they went right to 228 and 258 pounds of torque, which as we've seen in other EA AAA engines from Volkswagen, comes in below 2000 RPM. Now, this is on offer in two flavors. There is a six-speed manual, Wielendank, as well as a seven-speed dual clutch, should be interesting. But then there's this one here, which is kind of like a one-year only deal. It's a 35th anniversary edition in this cool, like, battleship gray paint, like we've seen on the Audis. What do you think of the color? So I'm going to say it. I'm surprised, and I'll tell you what I'm surprised about. Not that there is a GLI. We knew that this was happening. Probably worst kept secret out there, as I said in that baguette. Mm -hmm. uh, but the reality is, I was surprised that they put in the 228 horse version of the EA Triple Eight, mm -hmm. which is that turbo four cylinder engine that is it's practically the same in every as the Volkswagen. GTI, right? Same as the GTI. I thought they were going to separate it out. I thought they were going to say the GLI because it's always been kind of an also ran compared to a GTI. Everyone and, wants the hatchback functionality, right? And it's not the just a cool European factor. thing. I think there is just a cool factor because that's what it, that's what invented the genre back in '76 in Europe. Mm -hmm. And now here we are, with 35 years later, mm -hmm. and we've got a car that has the equal amount of horsepower mm -hmm. to the GTI. Am I wrong on this? Should I should I should well, I have expected the equal amount of horsepower? I, I think they should be equal. I mean, why not? Because it's a, it's a great engine, and why not have the same drivetrain? So somebody that doesn't want that, that would want a more traditional looking mm -hmm. car can have that performance. Maybe even better performance because mm -hmm. I would imagine the GLI probably weighs a little bit less without you know that what? I don't bulbous know. rear end. But because uh, the design was different. Like the development of this car was specific for China and the US. Because uh, the back seat, right? Well, the back seat and the wheelbase yeah. were specific for those two markets where the Golf was very specific for Europe and okay. happens to sell here but it doesn't sell very well. Like as a basis of comparison, mm -hmm. a Camry, they sell 455,000 a year still, even in the SUV apocalypse. Mm -hmm. But in Volkswagen's total golf sales in the US has been 100,000, a quarter of Camrys. Mm -hmm. And here's the real interesting fun fact. In the golf sales, it's like 30% GTI. So the high, the high that's content a huge, cost, that's it's a, a huge, huge percentage. That's the, the halo mug. Halo yeah. model of that range, the aside only other, from the Golf R, maybe. Yeah, but the only other car that holds the, those kind of like breakdown numbers between the trim levels mm -hmm. is the Porsche 911. Mm -hmm. The 911 Turbo in the U.S. is 30 percent. Volkswagen sales. and Porsche share that history, and they're sort of coming back. These sales I, I numbers, right? I would right? think maybe Porsche is blessing them again. Maybe, yeah, they're, they're, they're giving them a little. Now you shared there was something you did some research on that car. Uh, something about the suspension is different, not just the. Oh, I, yeah. so I, talk, I talk about the tor torsion beam V mm -hmm. independent in the paquetta, but there was something else. Well, about it struts it. up front and it's been lowered by about six tenths of an inch. So it was it, it so they changed stands. the dampers, the whole thing? Everything should be all different, yeah. And for obviously sportier handling, yeah, you, this is a sports sedan, like a baby M5. That That's, you and I could afford. That is a bridge too far. <laughs> He's Excuse not buying it. He's no, not buying no, I'm not buying it. And I, and, and I wouldn't buy a new M5. Okay. I'd buy a used one, and those we can afford. You get an E39. Oh, I love the E39 M5. What, have you ever V8? driven an E39 540? I believe so. I used to work uh, part-time at a BMW dealership in college. Yeah. And occasionally you'd see one come in. They, mostly what they did in the service department was replace coil packs on 3 yeah. Series engines. <laughs> That's like 90% <laughs> of the work they did. <laughs> well, let's think about this for a minute. An E39 540, which mm -hmm. was a, what is a 5 liter V8, that had 282 horsepower Sorry. back in, what, 1999. Mm -hmm. Now we're looking at a Jetta that has 230 horsepower and 260 pounds of torque. Yep. Times have definitely changed. From an engine that's probably double as efficient. I think we should throw out a question to the audience. Have Do I? you think that there is a market? I'm not asking you if you want it because there's a difference between whether you want something or whether you guys would pay for something. Do you guys want to see a Jetta R? So that means all-wheel drive, mm -hmm. almost 300 horsepower. And if you would want to see it, be realistic. How much would you be willing to pay? I think that's a question we should And we put should out remind the them if they do have any questions during the feed here. Post oh, them up and they we'll should post them up that. so we yeah. can monitor that. Keep but I think, you know what, I think we should, we should change gears here. 
like a six-speed manual that's standard no, in the GLI? A, no, we should, uh, uh, a non-synchro mesh three-speed, which we should talk about. It's mostly synchro mesh. And uh, there's a specific reason I told him to wear a blue coat today, because he is going to be talking about the blue oval. Mm -hmm. I was not in Detroit. I was driving a proper car. In, in Spain the, or in, something? Yes, in the old country. Okay. And, and we're but done here. You, Goodbye. But no, you, something important. I wanted to uh, open this up to you. So what car are we going to talk about now? A brand new SUV from Ford. And there's something interesting about it, but we'll have to find out because TJ is going to roll that video. So Moto Man says, since I own an old Ford, that I have to talk about Fords. And as you probably already know, this is the brand new 2020 Explorer. It's all new from the ground up. It's riding on a brand new architecture. They're internally referring to it as CD6. It's replacing the old Volvo bones they've used for like I don't know, decades at this point. Good riddance, I say. This should be pretty nice. It's rear-wheel drive based, and of course, you can get all-wheel drive as well. Now, the new Explorer did debut at the Detroit Auto Show last month, so why are we talking about it here in Chicago? Well, good question, me. Little factoid, it's built in the Windy City here, so that's probably a good reason why we bring it up. So, base powertrain in this thing, a 2.3 liter EcoBoost four-cylinder engine that should give you about 300 horses, but they're also going to offer a performance-tuned ST model with something like around 400 ponies. A hybrid version is also joining the mix. It's going to have somewhere around 318 horses and, of course, much better fuel economy. A 10-speed automatic transmission is standard, again, sending power either to the rear wheels or all four corners, depending on what you need. Now, refinement and more interior space are also keys with this vehicle because they've gone to that new architecture. It should be much nicer than the current Explorer that you can buy in dealerships right now. But the only question I have is, why does it look exactly like the previous model? They could have done more. Come on. Ford Explorer, that's a lot of changes. It's a lot of vehicle. So, uh, again, I've been very clear with, this, with you on many different live streams and in episodes we've done together, I am mm -hmm. not a Ford guy. You are not. But I will You're tell you. You're a Porsche snob. I'm actually, I'm a, a Lotus reason. guy. I'm a Lotus guy, but I will tell you, I've kind of lost the religion. Okay. I have defected to Zuffenhausen. Mm. Like, the next purchase is not going to be a Lotus. You're, That's a huge state announcement. state of apostasy here. This Pretty much. I actually, I no, I'm not making this up and I can prove this. Mm -hmm. Uh, when I had the GT3 Touring, I took it to my church mm. and took my priest for a ride because <laughs> I wanted his blessing on the uh -huh. whole thing. Anyway, Explorers. Yes, sir. So I am blown away by this. So you're telling me this is a rear drive platform. Yeah, this the, is not the a warmed over The architecture is all thing. new. Remember, Ford has used a D architecture. They call, they call it D architecture okay. for a long time. Mm -hmm. It's basically what they inherited from Volvo, the S80, when they bought them back in, what, like 99, I want to say? So you're telling me the Taurus... Mm -hmm. shared a platform with the Volvo. And the Flex and various Lincolns. I mean, Ford did en make engineering changes to them, of course, mm -hmm. but the fundamentals were Volvo, and I hated it. Terrible. You're not a Volvo guy? I hated that architecture. Okay. At least the way Ford had done mm -hmm. it. There was no room for your feet. It, the footwell was so cramped. Oh, it was terrible. It was, and the space Very efficiency inefficient. was terrible. Very space inefficient. You look at a Taurus, it's it's a freaking gigantic sedan, and there's the, no room inside. The it. A pillar was like a signpost. Yeah, and ridiculous. the door is like this thick when you mm -hmm. open it. From the view from the edge, it's like, it's like, why? Mm -hmm. So this new CD6 architecture should address all of those issues. The vehicle is more spacious. It should have a much nicer interior, more functionality, and interestingly, as you mentioned, the rear drive platform that opens a lot of doors, right? That's what has I Lincoln noticed. not had in a long time. Absolutely. And here we all expected that to be in a sedan. Mm -hmm. Can this, did, I know you, you're close with Ford, can this be reproportioned for a sedan? I was asking about that and the, the one engineer was telling me they're focusing on SUVs with it, yeah. which obviously the Aviator mm -hmm. is more than the kissing cousin Which will be explorer. coming up later in the stream. Scotty is going to oh, give us a okay. whole overview of that. Very cool. Yes. So Aviator, yes, and I would think the architecture would be flexible enough to support a sedan as well, mm -hmm. a larger sedan, which now, would most, be awesome. Most importantly, give me numbers. How much is this thing going to cost? <laughs> I don't think they've announced that. that yet. Well, they haven't said. I don't believe so. Seriously, they have not said. Well, it's going to go on sale a little bit later in the year, and you know how automakers like to stretch. They announce, I, don't bring it up now, 
because we're gonna. This is gonna be later when okay. we talk about Lincoln's with the two practical people in my my, my two <laughs> road wives, Jill and Scotty. We're gonna talk about the pricing of the Lincoln because they did announce the pricing on the Lincoln, which I am still I still had to have a, a, like a, a coronary re removed from this. <laughs> so I'm concerned. I'm, I'm gonna tell you what I'm concerned about. Okay. The 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 Explorer, the Ford Edge, the Traverse, the Tahoe. They all have way too much creep upwards. They're all very, very expensive. Mm -hmm. So you, you look at that's a, a that's an issue because wages really don't wages grow don't ever. go up. Average income is fifty thousand dollars a yeah. year in this country. The average price of a new car is now thirty five thousand. Yeah. The average payment is five hundred. You can get eight year financing, right? You can, well, seven uh, year at uh, least. A little bit, I've actually, seen. my audience needs to know this about. They don't know this about you yet. They know that I am a major Dave Ramsey cheapskate. Mm -hmm. You are also a cheapskate non-debt kind of a guy. Yes. I don't know if you ever did the Dave Ramsey thing, but this he is probably cheaper than I am. <laughs> so this I'm is why we talk about miserliness. About, you are. Well, that's why you, he owns a 36 yeah. Ford. Commutes in a 36 <laughs> Ford, but I digress. The thing I'm seeing here is we got more creep. For Traverse is in the mid-40s. Now this is, I would argue, this is going to be a bit more premium on a rear-drive platform. Uh, possibly. So yeah. are we talking 50 grand? Certainly for the ST model. I would not doubt it crosses that What was threshold. the price of the ST Edge? Now you, I don't know. I have an answer. Forty-three thousand. I'm glad you do because I don't. So if that, that's a two-row, and it's not as good of a vehicle. No, it's, it's older 43, at this point. Forty-three. You're thinking. You're talking at least mid fifties for this mm -hmm. ST thing. Because that was an ST you were in front of, right? Uh, yes, it was the the blue one. Nice yeah. color blue, by the way. Kind of matched. The we should put this out to the audience as well because we want to make this a two-way discussion. Mm -hmm. And we've get, got some comments. Oh, we got here. some comments. We well, here. we have one. Uh, Janakakis. Greek? I don't know. Are you I'm Greek? Sure Let I'm me know if you're Greek. You got it. Um, he or and or she says you can make a Jetta R with a tune because we're talking about should they offer a Golf R? A but Jetta that's not Golf really R. a tune. You need to you need to literally build on a, a mm -hmm. rear drive system. That's True. a hell of a tune. True, but you I know would... who would do that is Busy Moto. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great guy. By what else? We see uh, Primo's Garage Car. Yes, sir. again, I'm sure I'm a frequent about. visitor. Thank Slovenia. you very much for 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 viewing. Slovenia. Yes, he welcomed me when I went to Slovenia. Oh, was, did you've been to Slovenia? Uh, yeah, it was a Mercedes. Where right hasn't there. this guy been? I actually busted crazy. a wheel on a tire. Oh, uh, that's a bad day. Yeah, that wasn't a good day. But he's saying, uh, what is your opinion on Corvette C8 and mid-engine Corvette? My opinion on a mid-engine Corvette? I mean, thank you, sir. May I have another? Yes, of <laughs> course, I would love one. But that is technically not a reality, but you and I both know it's a really... It's, a, it's as badly kept of a secret as a GLI. Mm -hmm. We've seen all the... The spy shots. Here's what I'm guessing on that. Mm -hmm. I think that's going to be electrification. You know, that's what I think is hybridization it up. type thing. Yeah, I think it's what logical. they're doing because they, look at what Porsche is doing. Uh, apparently, you weren't in Spain. Just, uh, just saying. I've been just to saying. Spain. Thank yeah. you. Uh, they changed. It wasn't the car we drove was the basic car. Mm -hmm. Shockingly, 450 horsepower is now the base 911. <laughs> but what they've done is they've changed the bodywork, so it's now all cars. Even the base car has the wide bodywork. All cars, if you get a PDK, have an eight-speed automatic that was developed for the Panamera, which that transmission is designed to accept. You ready for this? 720 pounds of torque. That's like those diesel pickup trucks yes. we're talking about. Yeah. That is in a 911. So think about that's, that. That's electrification. That tells you an electric motor give you at zero RPM. Exactly. Now they they have not been shy. They tell you we are going for electrification yeah. in 911, even in the lower models. Yeah. So I gotta believe. That General Motors is like, we're not sitting still. Yeah. We'll make the C8 rear drive front engine car. That's going to be the fifty, sixty thousand dollar Corvette. Mm -hmm. And I think this other thing is going to be the hundred and twenty to a hundred, maybe so two hundred thousand. So Corvette could fork and become a little sub brand of its own. I think it totally can. Like a Prius is now. There's like a family of them. Oh, uh, it totally can. Yeah. Absolutely. And here's the other thing where I think that goes. You take that electrification and you do a significant amount of modification to both the exterior and the interior. Mm -hmm. Hint Supra. And then you make it a Cadillac. Which we do have a question about here. We do. We oh, make it a Cadillac. Yeah. Um, should Didn't we... work so well with the ELR <laughs> Volt. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Design on the interior and exterior, meaning the proportions have to be right. Mm -hmm. The ELR didn't work because it was a front-wheel drive car with this beautiful body on it, but the wheels were too far and to the center. Like the overhangs like were like a crown. I want to throw a, que a question out to the audience, though. Mm -hmm. uh, is what's too much money for the Explorer? 
Mm. How much is too much? Knowing what are you willing to pay? What are you willing to pay what for an explorer? Pay? And let's break it up. Let's segment it for a one you would buy for the Rugrats, mm -hmm. and then the ST with the performance one. Because I take my hat off to them. They said, "What? How much? How much horsepower you said that thing's got?" Let's get estimated four hundred for the ST. That's, That's from the and to the rear wheels. Turbo. Yeah. Uh, even me, a, a dyed in the wall GM guy, I would actually be interested in that, but not for 60, 70 grand. Mm -hmm. Anyway, you guys weigh in the comments. We've got a couple more here. We've got more comments. We've got uh, Primo's again. He says, and yes to the, the E39 M5. Zer cool. Oh. <laughs> good taste in cars. Yeah, this guy really does have good taste in cars. Uh, Brandon Marks, more horsepower Supra incoming? Question mark. Um, I'm going to put a pin in that for uh, the very shameless reason that I have a video coming out tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I did do, I normally don't do auto show videos, but it's a Supra, man. And I, if you guys have been watching the show for a while, but you know. But is it a Supra? Okay, I am actually, believe good it or question not, me. I am putting, it's a very good question. And I want to say a lot here, but I'm putting a pin in that you discussion. I'm biting my tongue, because you guys know this about me. I had an A70 Supra, like loved it, loved it, loved it. And sometime in the future, I will get another A70 Supra. So I couldn't pass the Supra without shooting it. And yet you'll appreciate this. So uh, can, do you have your badge on you? My badge? Yeah. Um, well, you don't I worry it about it. Somewhere so else. the badges say that the show floor was open till 6 p.m. yesterday. They are lying. And so TJ and I are running around shooting these paquetas. And so we're there after 5, and they're tearing the place down. There's forklifts, oh, yeah. cars driving. Yeah. It's and they, open. Until yeah. They wanted to throw us out. So I go to Mark, and Mark who runs the show, he's awesome. I love Mark. He was throwing us out of the media room 20 minutes before. It well, to you, because you're from Michigan, but he's nice to me. Mark is awesome. I love Mark. The whole team, him and Jennifer, great people. Mark actually said to the security guards, they're allowed to stay. <laughs> so thank you, Mark, for that. And we shot this, like, super quick tech review with forklifts going and guys tearing this, literally tearing uh -huh. the display down as I'm Turned shooting the, the car. Yeah. So that episode's coming to you guys tomorrow, so I'll answer that question with you, for you tomorrow. Um, what other question? Z Lin, what watch he wearing? Is he wearing? Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, what have you got? A personal license. Okay, this watch has a lot of sentimental attachment. This is a Sector ADV forty five hundred. Mm -hmm. It is the first nice watch I have ever bought. It was um, it was it was kind of a gift to myself when I graduated college. Mm -hmm. Uh, you will appreciate this as a cheapskate. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I tra I've always traveled a lot. I don't know if you knew this about me. My first job out of school was Apple Computer. Mm -hmm. So I used to put my expenses on my then American Express card, which mm -hmm. I no longer have because mm -hmm. I am a Dave Ramsey guy. And I bought this half with points. Mm -hmm. and, what airline points? Uh, no, American Express oh, membership oh, rewards. This is okay. like an advertisement. Anyway, I'm no longer an American Express member. Uh, I loved the silver and the blue face, mm -hmm. and it's just very understated. We're very similar. This is Yeah, a, we both like that kind of stuff. This is a Scoggin. And I like, like the designs of these things. They're dirt cheap. And they're not the greatest watch. But it's a good looking color. watch. Yeah, but 150 bucks. Yeah. Come on. Now you guys will never, it's I do nothing. have other nice watches, which I'm, I feel like, a, 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 like not religion in, in watches, because I never wear them. I'm too afraid to take care. them out. I don't care. It's like, this is cheap enough. Yeah, this one Whatever. I'm happy to wear. I started wearing it again. Anyway, I'm going off on the watches. We have so a question. We should, we have, you know what? Let's hold that question, hold the question. Because I think we should, oh, you know what we should talk about? Mm. Being that you are a gas guzzling pig and you're 36 Ford and you're an explorer with 400 horsepower, mm -hmm. why don't we talk about an electric car? Do we have to? Uh, we have to, because I like electric cars. All right. TJ, can we roll the leaf? If you've been following the show for a while, you know I'm kind of a freak for EVs. Odd, I know, considering a guy that loves GT3s, but there's, you can't say anything bad about a car that's got instant torque. Well, we drove the new Nissan Leaf, because this is one of my favorites, uh, what, about a year, year and a half ago in Napa, and that was a very good change. The only thing was the range, 150 miles. I thought was very strange in a landscape that now is going above 200 miles. Well, apparently Nissan thought the same thing. So there is this, which is the Nissan LEAF Plus, and two big changes is the power out of the electric motor as well as the battery. Let's start here. It goes from 110 kilowatts to 160 kilowatts, so it's 150 horsepower to about 215 horsepower. And that's supported with a different battery. So if you remember, I showed you a naked battery in that first drive review. Uh, that sits underneath the back seat, but in the Nissan LEAF Plus, it's wider, so it's an inch wider on each side. Now, to accommodate for a larger battery, the charge times are would normally would be longer. In this case, they're actually about the same as the regular Nissan LEAF because the charging system is faster. 
Now there is one more change, but that's inside. The last noticeable change is the infotainment screen. It grows, I believe this one's eight inches, the other one is six inches. Now, this is the fancier one we're looking at. There are different trim levels. There's an S, an SV, and an SL. Uh, it turns out the 226, that's only in the basic S, which has the lower rolling resistance tires, but the SVs and the SLs, they're rated up 214 miles of range. And we are back from the land of electric cars. Now, before we go to talk about that leaf, a good question came in mm -hmm. about engines and trucks that only you can answer. So well, let's go ahead and answer that. Not only me, but well, I can't answer it. Joe E's name. He's asking, uh, how good of an engine is in the new Ford Ranger as compared to the proven reliable engine in the Toyota Tacoma? So I've driven them both, and. The Toyota Tacoma has a naturally aspirated V6, or a mm -hmm. base four-cylinder. For mm -hmm. the sake of argument, I'm just going to focus on the V6, which is 268 horsepower, mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. um, it's been in production for a very long time, 3.5 liters. It's probably quite reliable. Um, the Ranger, of course, has the 2.3 liter EcoBoost, which has also been in production for a few years now. Uh, but with a turbocharger and direct fuel injection and these other elements that may not be as reliable in the long term. Plus, there's an issue. Um, that I think is becoming more prevalent. It's carbon buildup mm -hmm. that can occur on the inside of the, uh, on the backside of the intake valves mm -hmm. because with direct injection, there's no flow of fuel going across those valves. Mm -hmm. So stuff tends to build up in those engines. They're not like self-cleaning. In the with port injection, high feature engines, the direct yes. injected turbocharged like that Volkswagen GLI we talked Precisely. about. Precisely, because when you think about it, it it's doubly problematic because when you have a turbocharger or a supercharger, uh, there's more blow-by. There's mm -hmm. more, because mm -hmm. you're pressurizing those cylinders, you're getting more air past the rings, right, of the pistons. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have more pressure in the lower end, in the crankcase of the engine. So that's going to be forced back up, force mm -hmm. more fumes into the engine, because the PCV system reburns that. What's this guy's name? That I Joe E. Okay, I'm going to rephrase Joe's question. Your own money. Mm. You're writing a check. Oh. And I need you to understand this before he answers this question. He owns, with his own money, with no debt, a 36 Ford. Mm -hmm. and, and V8. And a, what, a 17 or an 18? It's a 17. It's a 17 Mustang uh, 2.3 EcoBoost. Yeah, just EcoBoost. But it's a 17, so yeah. it's a current-gen car with that engine. Mm -hmm. So knowing that this is a Ford guy, you have to spend your money on a new, either a Ranger or the Tacoma. Mm -hmm. Which one would you buy? Well... I would go with the Ranger, but not for the reasons that you might expect. Siri, Siri Shh. wanted to answer too. Quiet. Shut up, Siri. Shush. I would go with the Ranger because I, I have, I have respect for the Tacoma. Everybody loves the Tacoma. Toyota yeah. sells every single one of them they can build. Yeah. Very reliable. Uh, they've got like the TRD off-road model, mm. which does great in the dirt. Mm. But the driving position is terrible in the Tacoma. It's so you it's, are, not, it's like sitting on the floor with your legs out straight in front of you. It's very uncomfortable. So you would take the risk on the engine, even I would though take you want to go two, the, I've already taken the risk on the you engine. Can it, do you think it can go two, three hundred, four hundred thousand 400,000 miles? With proper maintenance, yeah. I, so, think, I think a lot of people don't maintain their cars I, the I way agree. they should. I don't believe in 10,000. I don't. High, I'm a 3,000-mile guy. I, I do 5,000. Like my old Focus I used to have, I changed that about every 5,000 with mm. synthetic. The engine was absolutely spotless. Never burned a drop of oil, never a problem. Because manufacturers that wanted... that wasn't a turbo. No, it wasn't. But it was a low for, feature four. Just to, for sake yeah. of argument. Um, but I, I think manufacturers stretch the maintenance intervals to lower totally the cost agree. of ownership to the detriment of the engine. I also, power think, I also think that they overstate the fuel economy. When it was of bad a couple of years ago, they've gotten better about it. And I would, my answer to you would be, I would do the Toyota. Mm -hmm. Yes, because it's dead reliable. Mm -hmm. I mean, you literally will get sick of it before you, <laughs> it dies, and yeah. you will hand it to somebody that you know and love, and you will tear another one off the roll. That's exactly. what Toyotas are about. Exactly. But for me nowadays, I've been, and you, he gave me a lot of crap about this. He sent me a text last week. He goes, you're reviewing Lexuses uh -huh. now? And my answer yes, was, not I, even like yeah, not even a good one. And it's, I, it's fine. What was my answer to you? I don't remember. I literally, I told him, I literally I ran, my phone I ran out of Porsches to drive. Uh, but here's the thing. For reliable, I mm -hmm. would rather do the Lexus Toyota route of mm -hmm. the stay with the oh, V6. I'm sure they're probably more reliable. Because at the end of the day, you and I both know that when you put your foot into it, 
the fuel economy is going to be the same. Of course. And th that's what you're seeing in your two points where you EcoBoost starts. Uh, it's pretty efficient. I get 27, 28 miles per gallon. You get that. But driving six. responsibly. Yeah. Yeah. I'm you're not responsible, though. But the nice thing about the, the, the Ranger, torque. Instant torque. And it, it scoots when you get in the get into the yeah. I will say the Tacoma. One of the guys at the airport, he's got a Tacoma, and it's like you got to put your foot into yeah. it. It's like four thousand RPM is where it comes. Yeah, because it's a naturally aspirated, relatively small. But we do have one other on comment. the on which car? Um, I'm just trying to see. Uh, Zian Lin says Tacoma is very dated; hasn't gotten a redesign. Well, it so, did here at the yeah. show, but we're not going to spend well, time because it's just it's a, it, there's a new, Toyota. There's new, and then there's Toyota new, right? Which was Toyota is notorious for just. Changing a grill or something. It's yeah. brand new. No, it's it's pretty much the same. So that's but it has the grill and the lights, and that's yeah, it. Basically. So let's yeah, let's while you're on torque, I want to talk. I want to go back to the EV. I want to go back to the Leaf. That's what we're supposed to be talking. We about. We are supposed to be talking about the Leaf. See how we, we get off topic too it's too like easy. It's like a railroad here. switching we yard. You watches. Just... It's crazy here today. Okay, so here's what we got. The Leaf. Did you, did you drive it after I yelled at you for not driving it? Would you be mad if I said no? He's still not. Mm -hmm. So we drove together two Hyundais. We drove the Nexo, which was we both agree is the best Hyundai out. Mm -hmm. It's but it's a science project, and we both drove the Kia. No, not Kia. Well, Kia makes a version. Hyundai of it. Kona. Honda Kona EV. EV. And what did we think of the Hyundai Kona EV? It was wonderful. It was really good. It, the interior is excellent. There's so much torque. It will squawk the tires when you punch it. No, he's and he. We have him on camera doing yeah. it. Li on Sunset yeah, Boulevard, thank yeah. you very much. Now here's the problem with the Leaf, is the Kona is the the, the, the Kona, Kona EV. Nicer looking, That's, and better. It's better looking. It has 260 miles of range. Mm -hmm. It has better equipment, and guess what? It's 30 grand. Mm -hmm. I spoke to the. And is, uh, that a is 30 grand before incentives? 30 grand is before incentives, but I am not. I think mis incentives are, are misleading people. People think that oh, I'm going to buy an EV and I'm going to get 7,500 dollars back from the government. No, you're not. You're going to get some of it back mm -hmm. from the government, and you're getting it in taxes, mm -hmm. basically off your tax bill. So it's yeah. not real money in your bank. It's just a confusing to, mess. And this, I, I know yes. I'm going off on this Dave Ramsey stuff too much, but for me, you need to think about what is the check you are writing for the car. Notice I say I don't say payments. Mm -hmm. So let's get into the Leaf here. I spoke, I had a good conversation with a guy who does Leaf for uh, Nissan, great guy, and the, the Leaf, the regular Leaf, is 30 grand, the mm -hmm. one with 150 miles of range and the 110 kilowatt hour uh, engine. But the one with 150 ki 160 kilowatt hour engine, the, pl the plus, with the 226 miles mm -hmm. of range, they haven't announced the pricing yet. You and I both know it's going to be above the Kona EV. I saw a story today, actually. I searched for it. There, some documentation leaked that it might be $5,500 more than the, the base leaf, okay. which, is a, which puts you in the mid-30s. So let's throw this out again. Yep. Another question. You, you know what I would do. I mean, it would be the Kona EV all day long. Mm -hmm. I think it's a better looking car. I do, will say the Leaf is a fun car to drive. I genuinely enjoy driving the car. Yeah, I mean, you're not knocking the Leaf. Not the knocking the Leaf at all. you're saying the Kona is better? I think they missed an opportunity. I think when they went 226, that was good for two years ago. Mm -hmm. If they brought the it Bolt, out. Bolt, Chevy Bolt already beat 240 or something like two, that, right? Yeah, just 234, yeah. So, if they came to the market, they really needed to exceed mm -hmm. the, the Kia and the Hyundai at two, maybe 280, 300. Mm -hmm. And then think about it. At 35, yeah, I would look at that over a, a Model 3 for re the real transaction price on those are 50 grand. Mm -hmm. Elon Musk can tweet all he wants that they're 35 grand. They are not. Well, they're, they're not 50. building the cheap one yet, right? Even they do, do the build, cheap, build with the cheap one, you're still not going to pay 35 grand mm -hmm. for it. So I'm going to throw this out to you guys. What would you pay? For the 226 mile range, mm -hmm. and, and understand this, only the S model, the one, the cheapo one without anything in it, that has the lower rolling resistant tires, do, does 226. Mm -hmm. The SV and the SL does 213. The ones 213. you probably actually want to own. Yeah. The ones you and I see are 213. Yeah. Now, granted, you know, Jill's sitting over there, you don't know, she's off camera. She would drive it to like 300 miles of range because oh, she's God. practical. We are not practical. Mm -hmm. I we would like get, to squeak the tires. We do. So that's the question. Are you guys going to, what would you pay? And be realistic. Please don't tell me 25 grand because the basic one is 30. Yeah. yeah. Um, any more it's questions on the Leaf? Well, uh, let me see. But uh, it's interesting. The one thing the Leaf has that the Hyundai does not is yeah. momentum. They claim it's the best selling EV in the world, right? They've, well, they've delivered almost, for a while, yeah. Well, since 2010, they've got almost 400,000 yeah. sold. I don't and know. Does that count batteries. for anything, though? Does that momentum? In that segment? I don't know. 
I think the world is changing at this point. I think what's happened now is it's not just the Leaf that's out there. It's not just the Volt that's out there or the Tesla. Now you're going to have a choice. You, know, you do have a choice of an Audi. You do have a choice of a Porsche. You do have a choice of a, um, what's the other one? The Mercedes, the GLQ mm -hmm. that they're coming out with. Now all of a sudden you can buy a $30,000 Hyundai or you can buy a $150,000 plus Porsche. And oh, by the way, it looks like a cool car. Mm -hmm. Think about that. Any other questions on EV? Uh, not about EV. Uh, well, we have one uh, from Xinlin again. Uh, is the Kona bigger than the Leaf? And I would say uh, same platform. Believe it or not, they're actually going to come out with another SUV on that or a crossover in that platform because they need another crossover. Yeah, I think we've already thrown the question out. What I want to do now mm -hmm. is something a bit different. I want to go upmarket and completely not EV. The exact opposite. Okay. I won't tell you what it is. Because you, you are going to make me wait like all these folks. You, yeah, because you are not going to approve of this. I promise this. All right. So TJ, can we show them the cool car? Just making this tough on you. Now there is a certain code at auto shows. You're not supposed to like just get up on a stage and start Welcome. pawing a car. But um, I paid one of the guys at Lexus, so they let me up here. Now technically, they want me to show you a car off camera. It's the Inspiration series in this funky color called Flare Yellow. Now, you've seen the episodes, the LC500 and the LC500H episode. I am a, not a Lexus guy, but I love me some LC500. I'm not gonna show you a yellow Lexus. I'm gonna show you this stunning convertible. I, there is such thing as a beautiful design. There's a classically beautiful design. And then there is achingly beautiful. One needs to see this in person to understand. I can't tell you that there's anything significantly different about it. It is an LC500 with the roof chopped off in this cool white on white. But this, Sugasan has outdone himself. And then there's the interior. Remember when we shot the LC500H had that cool blue, white, and orange interior? This is simply like black and white, which works very well with the white exterior. But the rest of it didn't need to be changed because it's one of the better parts of the design of the LC500. I will say this though, here we have a hybrid, a V8 that has almost 500 horsepower and now a convertible. I mean, they call this a concept, but you and I both know this is coming to production. And then I think there's gonna be a 600 horsepower F-Sport. Does it now make the LC500 more competitive in like the 911 segment with a convertible? Try and tell me that that car is not stunning. Eh. Go ahead and try. It's fine. That is more than fine. What? Let me ask you what you like so much about it. It's natural beauty. Natural You look beauty. at that thing and it makes your jaw drop. That car. So I had, the, I had both the, the hard top with the V8 and I had the hard top with the hybrid. Mm -hmm. And... Because there's no convertible, it's a concept. It's a yeah, exactly. It's, it's a, a it's concept. a Toyota, like you said about Toyota before. It's yeah. a Toyota concept, uh -huh. which means you'll see it in three months. But I have had you've seen the cars we drive. Mm -hmm. You know, like AMGs and the the GT3 mm -hmm. and all. And Kumo picks all these cool cars. Mm -hmm. That car got the most attention. People would look at that thing. Oh my God, is that a Ferrari? Is that a Lamborghini? And when I tell them a Lexus. You'd swear I asked to have sex with their mother in front of them. That was the look on their face. Yeah. They were that, that surprised. Yeah. And then they would say, well, they how much is that They don't know the gigantic grill yet. People, normies you know what? don't know I that I think yet. people like to beat on those things too much. For that car, it works. Maybe not the ES, mm -hmm. maybe not the IS, mm -hmm. but the reality of the situation is that car is just classically beautiful. It's got the proportions correct. Mm -hmm. I like the short deck. But now with the fact that it's got a folding top, and I think there's going to be a 600 horsepower version that's coming up soon. Like a turbo an F Sport. V6 probably? No, it's probably going to be a, a the same engine that's coming out of the F-Sport. The five, five Maybe they just pump it. Yeah. And that's what I like what Lexus is doing. They've got, I think, I think they're, they're stepping up their design. Mm -hmm. And most importantly, they're not relying on a V6 twin turbo. They're, they've put a proper V8. Like, I would seriously consider buying used a GSF. Mm -hmm. They're very heavy. Very they heavy. Sound great. It's old school, but oh my God, it's, it's. You can't get a manual gearbox. You can't. You're auto only. You can't. That's kind of the, the other breaker for me, because I love three pedals. I love you and me both. shifting gears. The bigger problem for me about the LC500, as beautiful as that convertible mm -hmm. is, it's called the Porsche 911 Targa. 
for, yes, the 911 Targa is more money, mm -hmm. but I would have a hard time saying no to a 911 Targa and paying a, less money, but about the same money yeah. for an LC500. Mm -hmm. That is the issue for me. Plus, so your, I can get a manual. And Porsche and, yeah. It's just the way it drives. And not that the LC500 doesn't drive well. The, the, well the, it just doesn't drive like a Porsche the hybrid, 911, that's right. There shouldn't I mean, be a hybrid. There shouldn't be. Or they should do the hybrid like Mercedes does with this uh, 53 thing I was telling you about. The EQ where it's got, Boost? Yeah, it's got this integrated starter generator mm -hmm. motor that provides torque, 184 pounds of torque from zero. Mm -hmm up to 1800 RPM, and then the turbocharger takes over for it, and it's got 430 horsepower out of the engine. Mm -hmm. And it's seamless. It's a mild hybrid. This, the LC500 hybrid, not good. Mm -hmm. that's, the, that's the one downside of this It's car. a hybrid. It's, yeah, it's a Prius it's not a pre. It's not a Prius. It's just and a I hybrid. think it should evolve. They should have two types of hybrids. And Toyota is a company that has the, let's call it the research and development budget to be able to do that. Are we getting any questions on We're the getting, LC? Let's see, Ryan Travers at, or says, I'm thinking that Lexus is going to have a comeback. The old heads in the game were going to enjoy the more natural feeling as opposed to just a high-numbered output. I think he's I focusing agree. on more of a driver's car I, that's, without the highest... He's agreeing with me on yeah. the GSF thing, yeah. yeah. Seb versions, version, version says, the LC is quite impressive in person. Stunning in agree, person. agrees with you. Joe E is asking a question about EVs. How practical are EVs when it comes to charging? He lives in the north where there's a thing called winter. So that's an EV? a bit of a problem. Well, that's something where, you know what? We're going to talk about that with our next guest. I'm going to pin that, okay. put a pin in that conversation. You've got a lot of pins. i got a lot of pins. I do, I do the pins thing. I do unpack a lot. Mm -hmm. A lot of people give me crap about some of my very, like, old world sayings. But, and you, know, you give me crap for being old-fashioned? Well, you have a 36 Ford. That's, oh, that's beyond yeah. old world. That, yeah. That's prehistoric. It has mechanical yeah. brake storage. Have you experienced the <laughs> safety of steel from pedal to wheel? I will admit it's a it's an analog experience, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, I really, I'm, really enjoyed I'm it. I'm sorry it rained that day. It couldn't have a little longer drive. Yeah, that's true. You need to get a pilot's license so you can try my plane, because it's uh, about the same vintage. That's true. You bought a Cessna. Don't yeah. tell anybody. Oh. It's a secret for season 10. Oh. Don't tell anybody. Oops. Anyway, okay. <laughs> with that, with me. that, I'm throwing you off the show. I'm done. So continue to bring in your questions. We are going to... Uh, switch gears to a much more intelligent guest uh, mm -hmm. that will be sharing some more practical stuff. So you guys make me talk practical. I don't want to talk practical, so I bring on our next guest for practical. So with that, I'm going to say vielen Dank for joining us. Yeah. Thank you kind so much. Me. Oh, and tell so, them what we did so they can see Well, Motoman was in oh, a, Spain a driving Porsche 911s. He left me here the in the highlights. Midwest. To check out some Kia. Talk about a lot of things we Behind talked me about right TV. now is the Telluride, mm -hmm. and this vehicle was actually launched in Detroit. And it is all new, eight passenger, three row SUV, very family oriented, but it has a lot of really cool details inside in terms of safety tech and technology in general. Apple CarPlay, for instance, is on this vehicle with Waze integration. We really like that. But what I want to tell you about that I'm really excited was revealed not in Chicago, but at SEMA, and that would be the GT Forte. And it comes with a 201 horsepower turbocharged four cylinder engine. Looks great. Can't wait to drive it. But what was launched in Chicago, which is, you know, where we are at the moment, was the GT line. And so while this vehicle looks fast, it still has the same 147 horsepower engine that all of the other Kia Fortes have. So some cool things here in the Midwest, not Spain. But uh, he's got some stuff going on right now, and we're excited to check it out in Chicago. We may have cut off our last guest a little <laughs> prematurely. After all, he is a Ford guy. I don't mind throwing him out, but welcome, Jill Simonello. Hey. So good to see you again. It's good to in see your you. hometown. In my hometown. So, do you want to? I think we should start out by telling the audience uh, the wonderful experience you had in your hometown over the summer with a Dodge. <laughs> <laughs> You're always putting me on the spot here. At least I've already told my parents this story. About the gun. Uh, no, there wasn't actually a gun involved. Well, this one's not about the gun, but let's tell them about the, the Dodge the, the The incident, um, you know, where yeah. some guy kindly asked me for my car keys. Is that yes. what you're talking kindly. about? Kindly. Is that what he, it is nowadays? He kindly asked me for my car keys. Uh, yeah, no, I was actually carjacked this summer. <laughs> and tell them what car it was. It was the Dodge Durango SRT. So uh, you thought the guys were coming up to you to say, hey, nice car. Yeah, I totally did. I, like, whenever I'm driving these cars, I, 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 I shouldn't say I have no sense of fear, but I have learned that usually people mean me no harm. 
and um, like literally just the day before, right. um, similar situation. I pulled into a parking lot. Guy comes up to me, and again, I'm a little bit short. So the guy comes 4-11. up, four eleven, and he he kind of goes like this to get into my line of sight, and I was mm. just like, all right. He's like, hey, nice car, and I was mm. like, cool, thanks, and he left. So next day, literally twenty four hours later, noon. Um, in the middle of the day in a nice neighborhood in Chicago, Logan Square, guy comes up to me, dips mm-hmm. down, thinking, hey, I know what's coming next. Mm-hmm. Totally surprised. Mm-hmm. And this woman also lives in an apartment building there was a murder in, and you had a gun pulled on <laughs> okay, you. I don't think my th- parents knew that one. Thanks for that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to help you here. Um, the guy... Jill's parents, <laughs> please, get her to move. That's why I'm doing this, I, putting her on the spot. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for that. Um, so it was a domestic dispute in in my building. To be fair, it wasn't yeah. like somebody broke in and killed somebody. It was a domestic t- okay. dispute. So. Speaking of domestic, <laughs> let's switch gears. You decided Please. to talk about practical cars. So yes. tell me about the practical cars you just shared with us. Uh, which which? You <laughs> talk Kia. <laughs> I'm like which practical cars? Yeah, we shot this yeah. yesterday. She's um, already. She's well, the president emeritus of emeritus. the Midwestern Automotive Writers Association. Media Association. Media Association. Yes. yes. So she's a big deal. Um. I, a big deal for uh, for. And you're on many. I, apparently, I got it wrong. You're not just on NBC stations. You're on CBS, ABC. So Sinclair Broadcast Group. Um, I uh, they have I want to say more than a hundred TV stations in 80 mm. markets and 26 states throughout the United States. ABC, NBC, CBS, Fox affiliates. And she still puts herself in car trunks. Um, sometimes. Yeah. So, speaking of car trunks, tell me back, about... Back to Kia. Tell me about Kias. Tell me about um, Kias. Yeah, so 24 hours ago, that was a long time ago, and um, I have a little bit of a cold, so mm. excuse me if my if my details are a little bit spotty. But yeah, we looked at the um, Telluride and the um, uh, the new Forte GT and the Telluride and is the one that's shared, p- p- uh, twinned with the Palisade. Correct, correct. Palisade. So, mm-hmm. um, twinsies. Um, mm-hmm. It is uh, the, the new uh, eight-passenger, three-row SUV... Uh, from them and very family oriented lots of cool technology and features uh, with a lot of standard safety technology (coughs) I know you're big on the safety technology but give me some of the stats in terms of family oriented like why would this be a better choice over like a Tahoe Um, yeah well I mean first off it's been updated it's all new Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, so lots of USB ports uh, for charging your um, devices, I, I believe there's uh, charging ports in every row, which is, I think, a huge well, even deal. Even in the third row. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Wow. Um, and um, don't quote me on that, uh, but uh, pretty sure. And uh, which is which is a new thing that a lot of the new SUVs are doing. So mm. other three row SUVs that are all new for the 2019-2020 model year. If my my rule is, this is my practical rule, there should be a USB port in the vehicle for every seat that is available. So oh. there should be, and there probably isn't eight in the in the mm-hmm. um, Telluride, but there should be. See, I I disagree with you. I think that takes away from the camaraderie of being in the car and talking with people. Like in all after I'm not, twenty I'm not, hours, you really want to still I talk to not, the person next to you trying, on a car trip? No, I, I, this is a very <laughs> practical saying. thing. I'm not trying to disagree okay. with you because I want to disagree. Sometimes I do that with you. Well, yeah, yeah. But it's my nephews. I got a uh-huh. five-year-old and got an eight-year-old nephew, mm-hmm. and their parents are awesome because they limit their screen time, mm-hmm. and they are well-adjusted, amazing kids. Like if you guys want, you should look at my Instagram because my five-year-old nephew he he knows the words to "fight for your right to party" by heart. <laughs> And he did a show for us over Christmas. It was so cool. I put it up on Instagram. You guys got to go see it. You should see it too. Anyway, he can, he, that maybe, this is a bad sales job of, mm-hmm. of no screen time, but they are well adjusted kids. And that is a limitation of the screen time. I would think eight plugins here, you, you lose that. Uh, I'm going to say yes, but no. Um, so, I, I, full disclosure, I do not have children. I do not spend a lot of time around children, but I do have. Um, well, you spend a lot of time around me, and I have the mentality I, and of a child. You, you are a child. Um, but no, I have a niece and two nephews, mm-hmm. and um, so ranging from 11. My niece's birthday was actually just a couple days ago. She's now 11. Happy birthday, um, niece. What's yes, uh, Samantha. Happy birthday, Samantha. Um, and then I have two nephews, mm-hmm. um, and my oldest nephew is 17. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, a little bit of a, an age group range there. Um, but uh, the, the younger two, 14 and 11, still um, are just starting to, to, like, play the games and watch TV. Like, my nephew... Can, my oldest nephew Ryan, he can he can have the conversations. He's a he's a good mm. talker, 
um, but the, the younger two want to be on their phones. So I, I, I don't know. And, and it's funny, I had, a, you, know, you were talking about Lexus earlier. I was visiting them in Phoenix, and mm. I had a, a Lexus, I think it was a GX, so one of the, again, three row SUV. And it had the, the rear seat. and other parts yeah. of the world, yes. <laughs> it had the rear seat entertainment. Mm. And my niece got into the car, and she's like, This is the coolest car ever. She's yeah. like, can we, just, can we just keep this? I was like, we, we can't keep this. She's like, but I want it. And that brings up a good question. How much is that, that Prado, that, that GX? How much was that? I, it's been a couple of years. Like I honestly, grand, like I don't know. 70? So then it's, how much is, how much do, do these Kias going to be? The Kia and the, and the Palisade? Um, I don't know if they've released pricing yet. Do you think they're going to be more than 45 grand? <sighs> That's a tough question. Um, I think that they will probably try to base it in the low 40s maybe. Yeah. But if you want all of the whistles and bells, I think it's going to be over 45. Yes. So here's what I think. I think if that's in the 40s and they keep the fancy one under 50, mm -hmm. they're going to knock it out of the park. They will, they will mop the floor with everybody's ass. Yeah. Because it's the size of a Tahoe. Mm -hmm. And I've said this in the, my live stream yesterday. The Tahoe, the, I got a 2015 Tahoe when they first came out. Mm -hmm. Uh, the, the lo one they loaned to me was the not even the fancy one was sixty seven thousand U S dollars <laughs> for a Tahoe. It's not an Escalade. Escalade's a hundred grand. So if these guys can come in that low, <laughs> huge difference. Yeah. Is that funny to you? It, it's, it's a little bit. Oh, um, it's laughable. Yeah. And it a Lincoln is. Navigator, hundred grand. <sighs> yeah. You know, we well, have friends at Ford. So I, yeah, I just drove the 80 Navigator. Eighty grand. Yeah, I, I, for exp expedition. I had the, the black label uh, navigation um, over Christmas uh, with I need my a family. picture of you behind the wheel of that car. Um, I don't and know that is, I have one. I don't know that I, I have one. That. Um, but but I have to say, Jonathan, I've, get her, get a picture. I really I really enjoyed driving it, and mm -hmm. and I purposely try to get these vehicles with three rows when I'm visiting my family in Florida for yeah. for the holidays, and we we always also purposely put my brother-in-law, and my husband, in the the third row. And how do they do? Um, they did okay. I, I think my not particularly tall. No, my, my my husband's he's he's like five nine, yeah. uh, but he weighs almost two hundred pounds. He's yeah. you know kind of a wider guy. Yeah. My brother in law is six foot tall and and and, and they and, fit back there. Yeah, they did. They fit. Now, would they write a check for that eighty hundred grams or something like that? Um, you know what? I, I think that's a question you ask somebody with kids. And, okay, and then let's. We both yeah. don't have kids. We no. are both not practical. No. Let's turn this over to the audience. I'm yeah. gonna ask you guys. What would you be willing to pay, knowing that the CX-9 starts at what, 32 grand? Mm, beautiful and the, car. And a beautiful car. Yeah. Uh, fun to drive. Fun to drive. And the fanciest one, which has probably nicer tactile feel than a Q7. I'm not mm -hmm. just saying that because we have a special guest <laughs> coming up. Uh, the tactile feel of that vehicle at 44 grand is better than the Q7. Yeah. So knowing yeah. that th that's, that's the competition, what mm -hmm. would you pay for either the Kia, mm -hmm. what is it called, the Kia uh, Telluride. Telluride. Yep. I was going to say Kia Vail. Uh, and then the... Hyundai Palisade. What would you pay for those? And which one would you choose? Which body design do you like better? Hmm. Which one do you like better? Be uh, between between the, the Palisade and the, and the Kia. Um, you know, I, 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 I'm going to go with the, pal uh, not the Palisade, the Telluride. I'm going to go with the right. Telluride. It's a little bit smoother to me. Okay, so while they ponder that and answer mm -hmm. those questions and throw some more questions up because we're going to take questions, mm -hmm. I have to share with the audience an amazing experience I had that had nothing to do with us, a little bit with a new car that I... Was it in Spain? Because you guys seem to be talking about Spain We talk about Spain a lot, yeah. 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 I love Spain. It's a wonderful place. But this did not happen in Spain. This happened in your city. Okay. By the way, she is the one that turned me on to Al's Beef. I showed the video from Al's Beef. <laughs> thanks oh, to you. Right. <laughs> so you guys are going to watch uh, I'm sorry. me do something different at a car show. Uh... TJ, roll that. And now for something completely different, cars doing something as opposed to cars doing nothing on an auto show floor. This is the concept and technology garage that happens the day before the media days of the Chicago Auto Show. And effectively what it is, is the opportunity to test drive a car inside of a building in downtown Chicago. Kind of like that concept, but now we have to find something to drive because there's a smattering of cars and trucks, some stuff that we haven't featured on the show before, some electric, some gas, even police cars. So uh, let's go down and take a look.
okay, so we can drive a car inside, which is great. However, the selection is like an electric car, a 1984 minivan, not even making that up, and a slew of crossovers. So of course, we're gonna start with this, but then Jesse's in the front seat. He won't let me drive it. So the least he'll do is rev the engine, right, Jesse? Yes, sir. Okay, Jesse, and he called me sir, so he's gonna rev the engine very respectfully. Let's hit it. Now here's the thing. I tried to get Jesse to tell me the real output because the only thing Ford has said is over 700 horsepower. They haven't even told me the damn torque yet. So maybe we should have like a, a bet that it's, what is it, 780? He's still going with over 700. I'm thinking it's gonna be like 780 and maybe the torque 720. That's my guess. So if Jesse's not gonna give us the figures of the new car, uh, there happens to be the old car sitting next to it. So let's recap, even though this is a new car show. Uh, 428 cubic inches translates to seven liters. It was rated at 355 horsepower, but as you and I both know, highly underrated. This one really was about 400 horsepower and 440 pounds of torque. Think about that. In 1968, that came in at like 5,800 RPM. Now, I need to drive something. So let's try. Uh, put the pins back in here. Okay, now that we get out of the way, the guy from Ford, Gian, good guy, but he's gone. So let's see if we can find the keys. Not there. Not there. Maybe underneath the mats, not this one. Not this one. Thank you, God. And it still has the two keys, so you gotta pick the right key to be able to start it. Okay, ready? Just an aside about the show itself, uh, yeah, I'm biased about New York and of course biased about LA as we pass a Charger. Um, but this is a unique show because it's such a big facility. The facility itself is so large, it's the first one that invented this whole concept of test drives inside of an auto show. I mean, look at the size of this facility. Think about what we're doing. We are driving, I would argue this is a couple of hundred thousand dollar car at a new car show that we're driving inside of a building and it is what, 30 degrees outside with a little bit of snow on the ground? This is, it's an incredible experience at Chicago Auto Show for that reason and the fact that the facility itself houses everything in one place. Hey look, it's Andre from TFL Car. Let's run him over. Let's run over the Russian. Whoa. America, America. No, no. So if you couldn't tell, I am a huge fan of the Chicago Auto Show not just because there was an LC500 convertible, but uh, Gian and Jennifer over at Ford created that great opportunity for us to drive that amazing GT500. Somehow I need to get that back to the hangar and Kumo and I need to go for a ride in it. Uh, but there was another great opportunity and if you've been following me on Instagram and Facebook, I promised you a very special guest. And Jill is always very special as well as Craig Cole, but I think I found somebody even more special. TJ, can you roll it? So I'm walking around the show floor and I find my brother from Long Island here, Ken Sauer. Also the Miata designer. Indeed. Now, this is going to look very strange because I'm really close to you right now. Yes. It's not because I want to kiss you, it's because I, don't, I haven't mic'd you. Gotcha. So what do we have behind us? All right, so for the 30th anniversary of MX-5, we yeah. wanted to introduce a special version here in Chicago. 1989, February, we introduced the first Miata. Here in Chicago. Though. In Chicago to the world, yeah. global debut. We had a red, white, and blue car, and we had a club sport in yellow. Yeah. And so for the 30th anniversary, we wanted to pay homage to that. And so we introduced a new color. It's not the same yellow, but it's sort of paying respect to what we did when we introduced the car 30 years ago. So we have this new color. It's unique to MX-5. Wait, this is yellow? Orange. It's this is called yeah. racing orange. Okay. So, so we've taken the yellow, and we've evolved it into this more orange color. So now yellow is orange. 
No, we've evolved it. Back then, yellow was like the sports car color. I remember it was yellow. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so it's kind of an homage to that a little bit, but we've it's evolved like it. It's like Swedish racing green. Yeah. It's not green, it's, it's blue. It's not green, it's blue. So anyway, so this is the racing, we call it Racing Orange. It's exclusive just to the 30th anniversary. We're building 3,000 cars globally, mm -hmm. 500 available in North America. They went on sale at 12 o'clock today, Central Standard Time. And they'll probably have sold out at this point. We're not sure where we're at, but I think they're moving pretty well. How many RFs as opposed to soft drops? Um, I think it's split 50-50. You can get them both in either automatic or manual. The car comes with uh, Recaro seats, Alcantara interior trim, orange piping. Hmm, I like that. And we're using the raised forged wheels that we run on the MX-5 Global Cup cars. Oh, cool. And we've got the Brembo brake, brake package. In Don't you do rays on one of like the GTs or something like no, that? No, we use Brembo. Um, use BBS. I'm BBS. Yeah, so yeah. with the Brembo package, we have BBS wheels, but for the 30th anniversary, we introduced the Forge Rays wheels. So it's a lighter wheel, yeah. stronger wheel, and a little bit more dynamic wheel. Now, two things I'm going to say. Number one, he knows this because he's not just a designer. You are, you have a club sport. You race. I race. Yes. So he, this guy Expect used to drive. He used to drive seven eight sevens. And six sevens. Don't even know. Yeah, Don't yeah, get yeah. me angry. And so not only is he a designer, you have designed not one but two Miatas. Uh, I've been part of the development in this one. I designed the second gen car, the NB. Yeah. I race an NB spec Miata. So and the white car behind me is my own personal car that I bought when I worked at Chrysler in 1989. <laughs> so there's a connection here. I have a very intimate connection with MX5. From now do you understand my first why I love as this a designer guy? in my career. So. Personal car. I'm going to go check out his personal car. And we are back with our special guest here, Ken Soward. Thank you for joining us here. My pleasure. Coming off here, the man. show floor. Now, you shared about the 30th anniversary, Mian. We'll get to that. Okay. But you and I, you and I are celebrating an anniversary. Yes, we are. We are. I what did we what happened literally? A year ago last night. A year ago last night, we we were here in Chicago. We went to Geno's East. Yeah, we went to Geno's Which is East. a tradition for Mazda. And we talked about cars, and we talked about what I wanted to own one day. And yeah. So it was pretty cool. So we had a good opportunity to But what did you want to own? I wanted to own a mid-year C2 Corvette in NASA blue mm -hmm. with knockoff wheels, mm -hmm. fully loaded, power everything. So. And what happened that day? Well, that day turned out... It was one on Bring a Trailer, yeah. and I was able to bid on it, mm -hmm. and literally the next day I'd won the bid. So, so, we, so we, are, we are celebrating yeah, yeah, the year anniversary. It's basically a year since we did it, yeah. So I had the car delivered uh, about three weeks later, and mm -hmm. now I'm a, an owner of a Corvette. So. It is gorgeous. I can, I can vouch for it because he brought it to the hangar. And we, it is, it's yeah. a nice car. Yeah. We had a big day that day. We, we hung out with your Corvette. Jeremy brought his Jag, and He's then we tight. did launch control starts in an E63 S wagon. Which was very impressive. <laughs> as much yeah. horsepower as a Corvette has, it wasn't anything close to no, it. But your car, sense, yeah. The thing about your car I like so much is it's in really good condition, and it's the stunning beauty with the blue, because mm -hmm. he's got the coupe, but it's, you drive it. You're not afraid to drive yeah, it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a driver's car. I mean, it's in great yeah. condition. It's never been restored. It's only got 39,000 original yeah. miles on it now. I've put about three since I've had it. Mm -hmm. um, New Year's Day, I did a 250-mile drive with uh, Jeremy Barnes in his E-Type. We went down to Julian and back up to Temecula. And the car so Jeremy, used he used to run yeah. PR for Mazda. Correct. And the thing interesting about Jeremy and Ken, which kind of intimated in the uh, paqueta just before, these guys are very accomplished race car drivers. Like they really know how to shoot to the point where Mazda's unusual in this that you guys got to race the the, the real race cars. Yeah, we were we had been a big part of the development and the and the restoration of the mm -hmm. historic cars. And because of that and because of our you know, our history racing and the success we've had at Thunder Hill and the twenty five hour mm -hmm. races in Spec Miata, mm -hmm. we were given the honor and the opportunity to drive the historic cars. Mm -hmm. So I drove the seven six seven and Jeremy drove the RX-7 GTO car, which won the championship in IMSA back in, in there. I'm sorry, so. I just get to drive a, yeah. a priceless multi-million dollar race car as part of my job and get paid for it. And the irony I is really don't nobody like really you. thought it was a, a million dollar race car, and then they realized, wow, this is a pretty rare car. So uh, You but, realize the 767, that one that sold at Gooding at Amelia Island? Amelia Island, That yeah. lives here in this city. Oh, it car. does, okay. Mm -hmm. And that was, I think, the car that kind of made 
our guys perk up and realize, wow, these are pretty expensive cars you guys are driving. So well, it's history. Yeah, you know, it you guys yeah, have, I know. It's rare that you guys have that kind of history. Actually, and let's, let's and segue. within our building. I mean, within our R&D center. You literally have it underneath the building. They're all in the basement, yeah. And, and we have a guy on on staff that we, that basically keeps the cars running. So do you guys we don't remember just display them. We you use them, yeah. yeah. And you guys remember I did an episode last year. I went to Radwood in the one that was done in Anaheim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I took your... Perfect, mm -hmm. what, 28,000 mile white mm -hmm. FDRX7. Yeah. I really didn't want to give it back. So I need that car. Well, we have a couple of those. Don't yeah, we? I'm going to take one of them now that I know you have a couple. Okay. So history played a role here in this car. This You call it yellow, but I call it orange. Tell me what happened since you and I spoke yesterday about that car. Since yesterday, well, the car was launched yesterday at 1130, and mm -hmm. the car went on sale. We 500 units. 500 units in, in the U.S., Car went on sale at 12 o'clock, and I think by 6 o'clock we were sold out. Did you find out the breakout between... I didn't. I just know that, that as of 6 o'clock, they were all spoken for. Okay, so Drew, who's in PR at Mazda, I asked him to get this. Oh, I didn't know Tim. Oh, no, Tim could. So they're both fired because yeah, yeah. they didn't yeah, get me this information. Because I wanted to have like the exact knew I, breakdown. Yeah, they knew I was going to talk to you. Because so I thought it was interesting that you didn't say, well, 250 RFs and 250 soft tops. You made them build to order. And I think that's the unique part of it. We did build to order. So if we sold... 450 soft tops and yeah. 50 RFs, that's what it was. So it was, you could call in, you could order it, basically either the RF or the soft top with wow. an automatic or a manual. So how did it come <clears throat> about? Did it happen at, at, at uh, design in Japan or did it happen with you guys? Um, the, most of the design for that came from Japan. We did, we do color cars mm -hmm. within our group. We have mm -hmm. a color material group. And we developed an orange that we really thought was good, mm -hmm. and we proposed it to Japan, and they took it and developed it further, obviously based with, with their, like BASF or with mm -hmm. Nippon Paint to develop the color. I think they worked with Nippon, and they developed the color, and that's and they de developed it for the production car. So. Now, did the idea of a 30th anniversary come from you guys? It, it was a collaboration. We knew we were going to do something special for the 30th anniversary. So we, our team in North America talked to our team in Japan, mm -hmm. and we collaborated what we were going to do. We knew we didn't want to change the whole car. We mm -hmm. just wanted to do something that made it unique. Like we had done in the first generation car where every couple of years we did a special version in a unique mm -hmm. color. We kind of wanted to bring that back. Okay, I'm going to stop you there. Jill, are there any questions for, for Ken? Um, well, there's one. Uh, just asking if you could get Ricaro's seat in the ND Club Miata in older years. Can you do that? Um, older years being NDs? NDs. Yeah, so 16 and forward. Yeah, there's a, I don't know if it's a club trim, but there is a, a Recaro seat option. I believe it's, <coughs> I yeah. believe it's the GT, but it, I can check with you. You know, I found something out today. I want to confirm this with you. The you have brakes the, the calipers are different in the back because there was only one supplier that could do a, a handbrake generally yes generally most cars the bigger brake packages doing a handbrake with rear calipers is a little tricky so there's a special it's a more mechanical so yeah. now as everybody's moving to electronic handbrakes we're you know that's not an issue but as yeah. you know in the miata we still have a traditional handbrake so which is wonderful yeah which is great so yeah. We're back to that traditional way. So we have Brembo's in the front. We have uh, Mazda, you know, uh, calipers in the back. Yeah. And they're painted orange to match the color of the mm -hmm. car. But yeah, they're still a, your traditional handbrake in the back. Okay. So what are we working on next, you and I? Because we built a SEMA show car together. We got to do something. We have again. to put a plan together. We do have to, yeah, put, a we have to put a plan together. What do you guys want to see us do? We've already built SEMA show cars. I wanted to do a race car. I wanted to remember Derek. We wanted to do that Thunderhill race car and correct, go to Thunderhill yeah. and race it together. Correct, correct. We need to do something like that. Yeah. Or maybe we need to be, build our own Mazda Speed Three, because it seems to be that's not happening. That would be a, a great opportunity. Look at it. No answer. No that. answer from this guy. Uh, give me. I'm, I'm gonna let you go now because I know you gotta go. But uh, before you go, you have a list of ten cars you want to buy. You've already had two. You had the 911. You got the Corvette. What are the rest? Okay, so within the list, I've adjusted a couple of them, yeah. but um, basically a Ford GT, the mm -hmm. first gen of the new one, mm -hmm. um, a Plymouth Superbird. I don't know how long I would you keep it. You are from Long Island. Yeah, yeah, I don't know how long I would yeah. keep it. He is a brother from another mother. <clears throat> a 78 Trans Am, black gold, honey Wow, gold. man. <laughs> You're showing These your These are just cars that I grew up with yeah. that guys had in high school that I always wanted to have but they're, they're not a great they're yeah they are they're, yeah now. they're going and that's part of it, what have, i'm looking at yeah here. they're about 50 six. and that's kind of where i'm at i'm looking at cars that i can get yeah keep them for a year and then sort of flip them in a sense yeah, and you'll make, make money a couple on bucks them. On i yeah. did that with the 911 turbo 
Hopefully I can do that with the Corvette. So I've got Ford GT. Um, I have a 62 Cadillac Eldorado convertible, which is what we had as a kid growing up. My yeah. father had one. Um, Fancy. The Trans Am. Uh, I'd love a 78 911 or 930 Turbo. Oh. But Sounds all of these are now kind of hitting a point yeah. where they're a little hard to get my hands on. Yeah, two bills, um, a 250 on one of those. Uh, 928. Um, Bosca? GTS. Oh, GTS. Yeah. That was, there was one that no sailed about a buck 40 at uh, Scottsdale this year. Oh, was it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. It was a 17,000 mile car. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they're, they're usually in the high, like, 70s, 80s. 70s, 80s. Yeah. The yeah bag, so, I just was looking at yeah. the Haggerty book there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's another one. Um, and couple old muscle car products. So. Okay. we got to get to 928. i got a good story for you in the 928, which is going to come up as an episode later on in Season 10 where we do some classic And cars. we've talked about 928s in the past. Love so, yeah, these 928. And I was They're close. Trouble, I was I close. I'm going to have one. Yeah, yeah. I was close on one, too. Yeah, that's a, Maybe when I do that episode, you will come That'd and be we'll great. tell yeah, the yeah, both we of our stories. tell our stories. That'd be great. Thank you so much. Hey, my pleasure. Really enjoy Anytime, chatting man. with you. I appreciate you taking the time to come off the floor and do this, especially no in an odd place like this. No problem. Uh, so TJ now is going to, we're going to talk practical cars, so I'm going to let you go so you can fly back because you're doing a race Sounds this weekend, good. aren't yes, you? Yes, yes. So he's ditching me early. Uh, so TJ, let's talk Cadillacs. So Moto Man likes me to come and talk about practical cars, and I love this. This is practical luxury. This is the Cadillac XT6. It is a three-row, six or seven passenger SUV, and it's a category killer in that it's going to kill in this category. If you need a third row, if you need seating for occasional extra passengers, the XT6 has it, but it still is all the luxury that you expect in a Cadillac. Some of the features that I really love um, is a redesigned uh, user interface infotainment system. We, Moto Man and I had driven the XT4, which featured an all new system. This is even more refined than that. Another thing that I really love are the USB and USC ports. So you can plug in any device that has a USB-C, you can plug that right in without an adapter. Under the cargo floor in the cargo space, there's an ex extra bin for space. So if you have your third row seats up and you've got passengers, but you need a little extra storage space, it's there for you. My favorite feature though, is I got a walk through uh, the, the car with designer Crystal Wyndham and she showed us why the interior of the car glows. They actually have woven carbon fiber that is just this beautiful, luxurious touch inside the XT6. All right, so uh, George had to go pay the water bill, apparently, and uh, we, we ditched him for a moment. We ditched you, um, but now wait, now he's coming back, sorry. But for a second, I wanted to go back to the Kia Telluride. I had to say goodbye to Ken. Come on. Well, whatever, whatever. Yeah. Paying the water bill. Uh, but I want to go back to the Kia Telluride uh, for a minute because... Um, we have questions on it? We, we had one question. Okay. They asked if it was competing in the full-size or the mid-size segment, um, which made me go consult the Googles really quick because we were talking about comparing it to like the Tahoe, Tahoe. and yeah. the Escalade. Um, but it's probably more accurate to, to well, the Pilot and the um, Ascent. And so that puts it in the larger side of the mid-size. So it's not, well, we know it's not a body on frame. No, it is and not. We know that. It is not. Um, but apparently, um, I did see that there was some pricing released. It looks like the base price is going to be 32 ish and that um, it'll probably top out around 40 Are you serious? Yeah. They are going if, to if kill the, if, it. If Dr. Google is correct. They are going to kill it if it's forty grand. Yeah, so if, if, if the Googles are correct. And I will tell you, my, I, between the two, I like the design of the Kia better. I like the boxy Volvo look of it. Yeah. I think it's pretty cool looking. Yeah. Um, so Cadillac, let's talk Cadillacs. All right. So this is the XT6. Tell me what you know about the XT6. I don't know a lot about the XT6. I saw it in Detroit. Yeah. Um, I was at the reveal. Um, I think it looks really good, uh, mm -hmm. and, and it's funny because so we have um, a local TV station in Flint, and mm -hmm. so I do a lot of work with them um, at the Detroit Auto Show. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm like up at 3 a.m. and you know there until they shove us out the door. And uh, we we did spend some time looking at the XT6, mm -hmm. and I like the way it looks. I think it's a, a vehicle that Cadillac needs in their lineup. They were mm -hmm. definitely missing you know, that size of a vehicle because mm -hmm. they went from, you know, the X-T5 to the Escalade. Escalade, big jump. 
And and so uh, they years ago it wasn't a big jump. Now it is. And now it's a, yeah, yeah, it's a huge jump. And and so they had a hole. And with SUVs doing so well, they just really needed to, to fill in that space. It looks good. Um, obviously, we haven't driven it yet mm -hmm. uh, because it's it's they haven't had their their so yet. <laughs> before I when we talk more about this. Mm -hmm. I need to share with them the big problem that that car has. All right. Shall we roll the big problem? Oh. <laughs> TJ. Yes. So Moto Man doesn't understand why people love what he calls baby buggies, but he will love this, the Lincoln Aviator, because the whole design of this car is about letting you feel the freedom of flight and what it's like to drive a truly glorious car in a really, with a really great drive experience. This is a 400 horsepower, three row, six or seven passenger SUV. And one of the things that I love about it is Lincoln's beautiful, gorgeous, amazing new style. They have restyled the entire brand and Aviator embodies all that that new style is from the front grille to the hood lines to all the interior details. Inside, there's beautiful leather, really beautiful user interface, but really the magic is in the chimes. So they've taken a, many of those annoying beeps and buzzes, electronic sounds, and they actually hired the Detroit Symphony Orchestra to create those chime sounds. So when, instead of an annoying beep telling you you haven't buckled your seatbelt, you get beautiful plunks of the violin from the Detroit Symphony Orchestra. Another thing that I really love is that they have recognized that we're never without our phones, but we may be without our keys. And so they've turned your phone into a key fob that will allow you to pre-start the car, unlock the car, drive the car, lock the car, all with your phone. You never need to have a key fob in your hand. Um, another thing that I really love are these soft touch doors. So the door handle does not have any moving parts. There's simply a button on the inside. So you push the button and the door opens just like that. I never thought I would see the day that I would say the Lincoln is probably the one I would go with over the Cadillac. I, you know, so as much as I think that the XT6 is an attractive vehicle, <laughs> that Aviator it's is stunning. stunning. So they revealed it at the LA Auto Show, mm -hmm. and um, I had the chance to kind of climb around in it a little bit. And mm -hmm. in addition to some really cool features, uh, it, it just like. The grill, like I'm, I'm blown away. Uh, bleh, bleh, blown away. She's getting over an illness. Uh, it, 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 it's what happens It's just because in I miss you. It's because I miss you. That's <laughs> that's the illness. I have that effect. On um, me. but uh, I, uh, but but it, it's just so well put together. The grill, like mm. I, I love the new Lincoln grill that they've been going for. Well, it's like not the, as horrible as it used to be. Yeah. No, but like the 3D and you can yeah. kind of see through and yeah. um, just the, the fact that they're going to put a, you know, plug-in hybrid version car. with it, you know. And so here, here you're speaking about EVs earlier, mm -hmm. um, here's the interesting trend that we're starting to see with hybrids and EVs is that they are, um, they're now the performance versions of the vehicle. They are. And, and so I, I don't know if you caught the Super Bowl commercial with the RAV4, Tony. You're asking um, me about football. Me. Oh, I don't watch it for the football. Okay. Okay. I watch it for the commercials. I Come on. I did go to Super Bowl party. I uh, made a step forward this Okay, year. so the commercial, though, was, uh, it was called Tony, and it mm -hmm. was talking about the RAV4 um, hybrid, and they were calling it the performance hybrid. And, and it's the, um, the, the RAV4 kind of, you know, has two tiers where it goes to adventure and it goes yeah. to um, hybrid, the XSE, and then the adventure. Mm -hmm. And it's the XSE that's like the sport version. And it has like the black, cool blacked out trim and stuff like that. But so yeah. circling back, you know, the, your, with yeah. your, your hybrid, your plug-in hybrids, those are your top end high performance versions now. Well, in the Toyota, it's funny you bring up Toyota because that's not the only group that does it. Lexus does that in the UX. Mm -hmm. The UX, the hybrid, is the one to get. Mm -hmm. I've driven both. Mm -hmm. It's obviously more powerful, mm -hmm. but it is a better driving experience. Well, it's more quiet, it's smoother. Yeah, and you get the all-wheel uh, drive in that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, and just as an aside for the RAV4, did you see that they, they came out with a TRD model? Here? I did. I think that's sacrilegious, but whatever. Well, well so the, the sacrilegious part is it's like, kind of more of an appearance package than it anything is. else. I think they they tweaked the suspension 
And uh, but the, like the engine's the same. I think the ground clearance is the same. I feel like too many car manufacturers nowadays are watering down their once haloed upper echelon brands. Like I've just recently, have you driven those e those fifty three series Mercedes yet? Mm -mm. Y you of all people, Miss Practical, you should drive them. Because she is, she's a lead foot, number I, one. I, I she's a fast I, driver. I am. She's a good driver. Yeah. And she likes performance. I do. But you're practical. I am. And that's why you will love this. I keep on, I, I'm blown away by the system. Because it's a mild hybrid. Okay. But none of the crap of the, the, the weird handoff, and it's, the, it's tuned for performance. Exactly what you're talking about. Okay. It's actually been a couple years since I've driven a Mercedes. Yeah. We'll have to uh, fix that. So I will, I will have to... Go beat some drums. Yeah, we'd have to beat some drums. But here's the, here's the story here. Now, let's go back to aviators and XT6s. Mm -hmm. I think Lincoln placed the right bet. Like, if you look back in the sedan market, mm -hmm. you got the CT6 and you got the Continental. I feel that the, that the Cadillac placed the right bet because in that segment, you need a premium feel. Mm -hmm. Now, you could say that, that the buyer is not going to notice the difference of a front-wheel drive vehicle as opposed to a rear drive vehicle, especially as all-wheel drive. Mm -hmm. I completely disagree. Mm -hmm. The person, like, you are, you're a girl, but you're a car girl, you know cars. Yeah. Most women that buy a car that they don't really think about, they're not car people, they, 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 they are going to notice a difference. Like, you get into a BMW, I'm like, I like the way this drives, I can't tell you why, but I like it better than the Audi. Yeah. And that's why they sell so well. Yeah. Or at least so well, I should say. Yeah. <laughs> so Cadillac made the right bet. I argue that this, um, I don't know if you were there when, when uh, Craig was talking about it, they call this the CD platform or something like that, that mm -hmm. they're basing the Explorer and the Aviator on. Okay, yep. I think this is a game changer for Ford. I think what they did is they said, you know what, we've got Escape, we've got Edge, we've got this EcoBoost thing, this Eco thing, which is mm -hmm. terrible, but it'll be better <laughs> in the future, hopefully. We've got all these different sizes. Right. Let's, take a, let's take a flyer. If we want people to spend 50 grand on a vehicle, no one's taken us seriously against the next five. Maybe they will if we actually put the right underpinnings. And I think that's what they did here. Yeah. So that combined with the design is why I like the Aviator better. Okay. Because of what it's riding on. And then she yeah. did you say, well, you, you know Scotty very well. Mm -hmm. Scotty goes off on the esoteric stuff. So she went on the Cadillac with the carbon fiber trim. Right, right. Which other companies do do that. And then uh, the thing with the Detroit Symphony, I actually oh, sat yeah. in the car. I was like, "Wow, this is pretty cool, well, man!" It, it, so when they did the um, like the pre-reveal of the uh, the Aviator at, yeah. at the LA Auto Show, they actually had the uh, people who from the Symphony who created those chimes there playing the chimes playing in the person. Chimes. That's I so mean, it cool. was it was actually it, it was very cool. It was very cool. So you haven't driven that car yet. No, I don't think it's... I don't think anybody's uh, ever driving Yeah, and so we, we do have a question on here. Yeah. Um, are there going to be any new reveals at the Chicago Auto Show that haven't been seen on the at the re recent Detroit show? It looks like they're all the same. Uh, it, well, I think that's a good lo good logistical question. Mm -hmm. There were some new reveals. There was a mm -hmm. GLI that wasn't seen at Detroit. Mm -hmm. There was the Rock... What is it? The Rock Creek version of the Pathfinder, which is like mm -hmm. just... Appearance package. Appearance package, I think. Kia, like, you yeah. showed us the Kia. Yep, the, the GT line. GT line. And then there was the, I think the HD pickups. There was one HD pickup that was shown here. Uh, so Ram did, uh, the, well, they <laughs> so they showed their version of their multi-function yeah. tailgate uh, on, on the 1500. Then they had uh, an HD uh, pickup truck, yeah. you know, the, the range. You of know, the there's something we missed, hmm. and it was when we were at the Kia booth. Hmm. You realize there's another new Kia that was shown? There was a refresh of the Sportage. Yes, there was. But you know, they were so silent about that. They mentioned it during the breakfast. Know. Yeah. And and then they uh, they uh, yeah they kind of glossed over that. I I mean, Gwen, you, yeah. you barely even notice. I personally think that is a very good looking vehicle. Mm -hmm. I would never buy one, mm -hmm. but I think it's a good looking vehicle. Then there was I was was the LC five hundred shown in Detroit the convertible? It was. It was. It was. Okay. Um, they, I mean, there there were there were a couple of other things. Yeah. That you may not want to talk about, but. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, we have a prohibition against Subaru here at the show. So and yeah, the legacy. There's there was another one. There was a, was another one. Mm -hmm. Oh, Land Rover. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So there were there were a couple of other things. Yeah, but the difference between those two is I like Land Rovers. Okay. You know? So like I want one of the new Defender things. Like I I'm I can't big, wait until that like, comes out. Like one of the bat one day I would love to have like an old school like first gen Rover. Mm -hmm. man. How cool would that be to have? Yeah. No, that that would be cool. You know uh, Boston, right? You know Boston Wasif. You see, I'm sure I, I know yeah. the name, but I yeah, do not he's, know. Yeah, he's him. he's he's a, he's like one of us. 
and uh, he's got a, a first gen Rover. Always okay. complaining about it. It always breaks. <laughs> the parts are like a gazillion dollars. Right. But he will never part with it ever. Ever. Like I think he told me once he would part with his child and wife before he'd part with that. Those those are strong words. Yeah, they're yeah, it is. Uh, yeah. yeah, but but the Evoke was what Land Rover the Evoke. revealed. But that was like they're bringing it. It was like a facelift. No, no, no. Look. It's a completely all oh, new completely 2020. New. Yeah. Yeah, um, lots of Valar-like technology. Can I and... give you a uh, Can I give you a fun fact? Sure, fun fact. The man who now runs Land Rover Design, mm -hmm. uh, he sits under Jerry. Uh, he came from Kia. Yeah. Massimo Frischella. Okay. A very talented designer, super cool guy, and his wife, she worked in color and trim over at Hyundai. Yeah. So they now both work at Land Rover in, in the UK. Yeah, so he's, that was his baby, that, that, okay. that, 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 that Evoke. The Evoke. Yeah. I, I like the Evoke. It's a city car, and I live in the city. And, you, see, you, know. you like the way it drives? So it's been a while. I haven't driven the 2020, yeah. um, but the, the it's, it's been a while since I've driven the regular Evoke. But yeah, I did. You like Okay, we need to but get again, you into Mercedes. City you haven't been driven a Mercedes in a while. Chicago and... Have you driven a GLC? No. What? The GLC's like I think the only Mercedes this point. I've ever driven... In uh, recent times, uh, there's two. I've had the the C class, yeah, and that was like two or three years ago. Yeah, uh, in a snowstorm, all wheel drive handled really well. Yeah, those are um, good driving. And I would I, actually pick that over the over the three series. I had the um, the the convertible S. Okay, I'm gonna throw this out to the audience here. <laughs> what do you think of the Evoke? Do you like it? Do you not like it? And why? I want. Uh, way in mm -hmm. here, and are there any questions that came up recently? Um, uh, yes, there is one. Um, it's uh, what do you think, or why do you think Kia has been so successful lately? Because they brought people from the Germans, or anything else? Like what? What is? I think it's a combination to? of things. I, yeah. I love these questions where they're more. They're, it's not just do you like this car, and what right, about right. horsepower. Mm -hmm. I like talking more about trends and business and that kind of stuff. I think it's a multifaceted thing. I think the first step was definitely Peter Schreier. Mm. And that is, it's like, you understand this because you are, you know, we've been around for a while. We're, right. we're both, we're both old. I'm and we old. see that life takes, it, you don't wake up one day and something happens. Yeah. It's very small steps consistently mm -hmm. over time. Mm -hmm. And Peter Schreier came to Kia in, what, 2007 or something like that? 2006, I think? And it's taken mm -hmm. him now 13 years <laughs> to completely keelhaul the entire company but he took a risk. Yeah. Back then it was a risk. He opened the door for people like Albert Bierman to then come to Hyundai, but right. 10 years later. And then he opened the door for like guys like we had Ken in here recently. Mm -hmm. His old boss, Derek Jenkins, mm. ran design for Mazda. Okay. He was like the wunderkind at VW design. Like the, uh, he worked on the TT, he worked on the Beetle. Yeah. The A8 was his car. The A2, you know that cool at first A2 that had that very cool European look to it? Mm -hmm. It was only sold in Europe. Mm -hmm. That was mm -hmm. his sketch that became that car. This guy was a super okay. talented designer. He took a flyer and went to this EV startup. Lucid, I think it's called. Whatever they call it now. Okay. And so he opened up, Peter opened up those doors. Then, behind that, over on the Hyundai side, they mm -hmm. brought in a lawyer. Finbar O'Neill, what's his name? You think he's Irish? <laughs> no. Yeah. I think he's Italian. I think he's Greek. So <laughs> they bring in the lawyer, and the lawyer says, people are buying Hyundais because they have bad credit. And why are they doing that? It's number one, it's people who walk into a dealer and say, I'm a get-me-done, which means if you give me the credit, I'll buy your car, mm -hmm. which tanks your resale, because a lot of people, they default on their loans. Right. And then it's people who just want a cheap car. And he was like, why, why are we only getting those people? And he found out that because of the Excel back in 1986, the first Hyundai they sold in the US, they had this bad reliability record. So they said, okay, how do we address that? Mm -hmm. We need to give Korea some time to turn that around. Yeah. So in the interim, let's come up with this ridiculous 10-year warranty. Yeah. Borrow a page out of the Lee Iacocca book. Right. So here we are now, the, you got a designer, and you got a warranty mm -hmm. from a lawyer now what do you do? Now you got to make the cars drive better. Yeah. So then they go and they start making the cars drive better. They did it okay on their own. Then they said, okay, the Schreier thing worked. Let's go hire this guy over who was making M cars, throw mm -hmm. a ton of dough at him, and he eagerly came. Yeah. And this guy, he, uh, he's coming up on the show. He's awesome. I got to sit with him for a couple hours. Right. Um, and then on top of all that, they stick with the Korean formula, which is we're going to sell you the car by the pound, not by the ounce. And we saw that 
with the Kia, what would you call it, the Telluride? Yeah, yeah. It's 40 grand for a $55,000 Volvo. Yeah. Ba granted, the Volvo's a nicer car. Yeah. Way nicer. But, but, but I'm... But 15 uh, grand's a lot of money. But what I want to say, too, is a lot of the... Um, like, if you haven't been into a Kia or a Hyundai lately, the finishing touches are really Better. nice. Better. Um, they're, they're definitely, and, and then you, we haven't even talked about Genesis. Oh, you know what? I actually, it's a car I haven't driven. Tell us about the G70. It's awesome. Um, no, it's so <laughs> Tell it, me how you really feel. It's, it's awesome. Uh, no, I mean, it's, it, so it won the North American Car of the Year mm -hmm. Award in Detroit. Yeah. Um, and, and mostly it's because they finally hit the driving dynamics. You know, it oh, drives. Okay. That's why. Yeah, it yeah. drives like a BMW mm -hmm. 3 Series. And um, so they have the design, mm -hmm. they have the finishing touches, the and thing. then they finally have the ride and handling. That, that was the piece that Hyundai yeah. and Kia were kind of missing. And so, like regular people necessarily, you know, yeah, okay, you want a car that has some, some nice yeah. handling, but, but it, you don't go into the weeds too Is much. Is it significantly different in driving dynamics from the Kia Stinger? You know, to me, it felt a little less heavy, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Um, so the interesting thing is, when we had the Kia Stinger, um, review, the, the, their reveal or the press preview, they took us to an autocross. Mm -hmm. So they didn't put us oh, on a full an, track. in an amusement park. In an amusement park. Yeah. It, it set mm -hmm. up in a parking lot yes. at a, a, like a Six Flags. But with the G70, they actually took us to a racetrack. The one in Maine. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so there are elevation changes, hard turns, hairpins, curves. So you're saying an unfair comparison. It, it, it was a little bit of an unfair comparison, but mm -hmm. the G70 held its own. Okay. I was incredibly surprised. Like that, that is not a car I would have put on the racetrack, mm -hmm. and they did it. And, mm -hmm. um, and I, I went through some track training this summer. Yeah, um, you did? It, I did. Where and, is this? Um, I, at Gingerman in Michigan, I like once a month. So that, that Dodge Durango SRT we were referencing earlier, yeah. I was actually supposed to, and I'm saying actually way too much, I apologize for you guys, mm. but I was supposed to take that to the um, racetrack at Gingerman and, and take it out and, and do some track training. But yeah, uh, no, uh, um, FCA gave me like five vehicles this summer to, to take to Gingerman. And the track time. Um, and, and so uh, I have a good friend who works for CGI Motorsports, I should mm. say owns CGI Motorsports, Phil Miranda, who wow. watches your show, by the way. So Phil, if you're out there watching this. Phil, I want track time at Gingerman. Thank um, you very much. But uh, he um, brought me out and taught me the ins and outs of, of driving mm -hmm. uh, on the track at Gingerman, which is a very small technical mm -hmm. track. I don't know if you've I've been there. I've never been on it, Gingerman. It's a, it's a great track. There, there aren't too many straightaways. There's a lot of corners. Yeah. And um, so I had a Charger. I had a Challenger. I had a, I took an Alfa Romeo. You had a great um, summer. Uh, the Selvio Julia? Quadrifoglio. Oh, Selvio, okay. I took the... Trackhawk, the Jeep Trackhawk out there. And so I had a couple of SUVs, I had a couple of cars, and was supposed to have the <laughs> Durango mm. SRT out there and um, did some track training. So I was in the middle of this track training when, mm. circling back to the G70, when G70 did their launch. So mm -hmm. at this point, I really knew, you know, w was more confident in what I was doing. I shouldn't say I really knew. Does anybody mm. really know what they're doing on a racetrack? Um, so I, I was more confident in mm -hmm. my skills and was incredibly surprised at, at how well the G70 did. I want to switch gears on you a little bit switch because it. I actually have a question in my pocket for a, from a longtime viewer. Okay. I want you to find some more questions, but I want to answer his questions while right. you're looking yep, for yep. other questions. Because at this point, I feel like I want to feel like we have not taken enough questions from the audience. Right. So, uh, Amro, you mm -hmm. have answered questions of Amro before. Yes. Amro is our friend from Saudi Arabia. Mm-hmm. Amro, uh, he and I, we see eye to eye in many things except for the E65 uh, 7 Series. <laughs> okay. He has horrible taste in that vehicle. Mm -hmm. uh, but I love him otherwise because he likes Cadillacs, he likes AMGs, he likes SRTs, uh, and he likes big planes as well. He likes triple sevens. Mm -hmm. So he asked a question. He said, has Cadillac lost the plot? He feels like Cadillac has stepped one step forward and two steps back as of late. He feels that they were on the right track with Johan Donetian, mm -hmm. and he would like us to answer if he's right or is he wrong. Okay. Do you want to start with that? You start. Uh, long and short of the story, I feel like they are skipping a couple of steps. I am concerned. I'll be very honest with you, I'm okay. concerned. I, th I feel the X-T6 is a missed opportunity. I think what they, hmm. what they should have done 
was made a tall CT6. It should have been based on that rear-wheel drive platform, okay. which, as you remember, that car is space-age technology underneath it. It is not just a beautiful car that was penned by the incomparable Bob Boniface and his team, mm -hmm. but the underneath of that car, like BMW talks about the carbon core in their 7 Series, and Hyundai talks about ultra-high-strength steel because really they are a steel company masquerading as a car company. I say this all the time. <laughs> um, but that CT6, the technology that went into it, is beyond all of that. And they could have taken that with a rear drive pa platform that drives incredibly well intact and just adapt it for a crossover. Because you don't need a, anything going off-road. You got the Escalade. Mm -hmm. And I feel it was a significant missed opportunity. But it's one of those things like you're not just missing an opportunity, you're competition then leapfrogs you at the same time which makes the delta this much right. as opposed to like this remember the 2012 honda civic it was a warm it was a terrible redo oh yeah and with the, the weird windows yeah and the... it was a it was a bad car but then at the same time hyundai jumped the japanese with that elantra in 2011 mm -hmm. and then it was such a bad situation because it wasn't just making a misstep but you got the leapfrog the CEO of Hyundai, I mean, Honda had to come out and apologize and said, we are rushing an update to market, and they updated it in one year. Mm -hmm. I feel Cadillac made the same misstep here. It's not a bad car. It is an attractive car. Mm -hmm. It's okay, but when you look at what that's going to cost, let's be honest. An XT5 with everything in it is $67,000. I checked before we got on. I okay. built one online before we got okay. on. $67,000. Let that roll around. $67,000. <laughs> It comes up a lot with that Tahoe, too. Right. So you know the XT6 can be more than that. It could touch 80. Yeah. And you're on a front-wheel drive platform for 80 grand. And that's, I, I intimated to this earlier, the Aviator, through the plug-in, it's going to be 80 grand. They right. announced the price. If you're asking me for $80,000, I probably wouldn't buy either for 80, to be very honest. 80 grand, I'm buying me a Porsche. That's just what I'm doing. But... Most people, I think, would look at those two vehicles and look at the beautiful design that Murray and his team did at Ford. The proportions are perfect mm -hmm. on that Aviator. The grill details, I would agree yeah, with you. The grill details are Except amazing. for the, the infotainment screen, I think they did a great job in the interior as well. Hmm. Tactile feel aren't that great, I'll be honest with you. But okay. I love the plug in 400 horsepower car. And that is the problem with Cadillac right now. And I'm not seeing, it. who knows? I didn't see it with Lincoln either. I'm not saying Lincoln is totally out of the <laughs> woods yet because they're still missing product. Mm -hmm. I feel those companies can't get away with no sedans. They've got to have sedans because at some point, this market, will it go completely back to sedans? No, but sedans are never going away 100%. Just no. that, that's just the reality of it. No. So that's what I think. <laughs> do you agree with me or are you going to look at me like I'm crazy like you always do? Oh, uh, you are crazy. Yeah. Um, my, ladies and gentlemen, my road wife. Yeah. Uh, but no, I, I, don't, I don't think you're <coughs> too far from wrong. Um, and uh, or too far from right, whatever the case may be. <laughs> um, but but no, I I, I think that um, Cadillac has a little bit of an identity crisis at the moment. And uh, you know they they moved to New York. Mm. They're moving back to Detroit. Yeah. You know the, their their main offices. Uh, they they killed the the CT6. You know the uh, CT6, I believe, is actually going to continue. Is it? I thought yes. It was uh, Mark Royce, a great guy, by the way. Okay. He's, he's and, uh, granted, I'm a little bit biased because he knows how to shoe. He's into old cars. He got, he comes to Bob Boniface's party every summer, so he's a good guy. He's a good guy. He's a Facebook good guy. Facebook friends with him, by the way. Oh, look at well, you, you Miss Fancy. He's a nice guy. I just see him once a year. Uh, anyway, so the he, I think he agreed. He mm -hmm. actually got on and on the record and mm -hmm. said, we cut a bit deep. We're going to keep the CT6. Okay, good. What, what they good. don't know yet, because what the, where is it? It's uh, Hamtramck. That's where the mm -hmm. car is made. They're taking Hamtramck offline, so there's nowhere they can build it. So what right. they're thinking of doing is doing production of the CT6 worldwide out of China. Okay. Because it still lives in China. Okay. So the good. idea is do the reverse Buick thing. Well, because when <laughs> I heard that they were going to, you know, 86, the CT6, um, the... Uh, I, 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 was, I was a little bit dumbfounded because one of the coolest tech features mm -hmm. that I think exists right now mm -hmm. is Super Cruise. You have driven it, I have not. Yeah. Uh, they 
totally hit the mark with their, mm -hmm. uh, I don't even want to call it semi-autonomous. I want mm -hmm. to call it driver-assisted um, feature. Yeah, people use that term. Uh, because people nowadays. use autonomous way too liberally. And what it does is it allows you to get on the highway. Mm -hmm. uh, so my husband and I drove to Milwaukee, which mm -hmm. from Chicago, depending on traffic, it's about mm -hmm. an hour, hour and a half okay. drive. Mm -hmm. um, mostly highway, mm -hmm. and we live right off the off the highway, so you get on and you're just yeah. Well, you get shot. Going? No, yeah. no, you don't get shot. Um, <laughs> other people get shot. I don't. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, In but your uh, anywho, um, but uh, so you get right on the highway and you know shoot up to to Milwaukee, and once you're in your lane, and you're cruising along. Uh, you you set the button. Mm. It allows you to take your hands off the wheel, put them in your lap. But you have to keep your eyes on the road. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the other driver assist features allow you to be like, you know, texting on your phone and talking to somebody else, mm -hmm. not keeping your eyes on the road. <coughs> and this has um, like a little alert system. I, I, I think, I don't think it's in the steering wheel. I think it's like in the, it, but it notices if you're looking down too much. Mm -hmm. and the steering wheel f will flash red. Mm -hmm. And when the steering wheel flashes red, that's basically telling you I'm turning off and uh, you better put your hands on the wheel before it turns off. But so they did a really good job with it because it keeps you in the lane. Yeah. It has uh, you know, adaptive cruise control. So if you come up onto another car, it'll slow mm -hmm. you down. If you want to change lanes, it makes you change the lane. Oh, not like the E-Class where you hold it no, and it changes no, the lane. No, you actually have to put hands on the wheel mm -hmm. and hit the, the blinker and move and and so then the, so it so sounds like a semi-autonomous system that has responsibility it, built into it, it has responsibility built into it and so it forces <laughs> you to pay attention and do like the steering maneuvers yeah. if it senses you're in construction if it sees you're getting off the highway uh again so it uses colors okay green means ready go it's on red means hey mm -hmm. pay attention put your hands on the wheel Blue means the system is still engaged and operable, but you are taking over control. So when you are changing lanes, I understand. Uh, the steering wheel turns blue. It allows you to change lanes. Mm -hmm. Once you are solidly in that lane, it'll turn green again. You can take your hands off the wheel. So red and blue, you need to hair your hands. I need to call wheel. up and get one of those things. It, I think we need to put a pin in this conversation because yeah. I want to drive one and have a more yeah. educated. Because I feel it, it, uneducated on it's this. It's very cool. And so, but the really good thing is, mm -hmm. is that they're going to be rolling this out to the entire lineup. I think they said by 2020. Let me come back to you on that. Okay. I don't know how cool so, that is. I'm, uh, you know, I'm barbaric. You got to so. drive it. Uh, any Pretty questions good. that have come in? I feel like we have not answered no, questions. No, no. Uh, okay. I mean, the only the, there was one question that came in about the the MX-5, which maybe you, neither you nor I are equipped to answer. Uh, just asking if there would be anything added in the future to help the comfort of taller oh, right. drivers. Oh yeah, there, no, there has been something added. I don't know if you're aware of this. Well, yeah, it's, a, it's a new option. It's called buy a Porsche. Oh, I was gonna say, yeah, yeah. drive with the top down. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, so what's really funny? I, I have you met Damon Bell? Yes, of course. Okay, so mm -hmm. Damon Bell is um, somebody who's based here in Chicago, works mm -hmm. for Consumer Guide Automotive. I asked this guy all of my tall guy questions because mm -hmm. he's 6'7". He went on the uh, MX-5 drive mm -hmm. and could only get in the soft top and drive with the top down. That's hysterical. So. Well, I'm going to say thank you for joining me. Okay. Thank you Are for... Are you kicking me out? Well, no, we're coming to a bit of an end because the show is coming to a bit of an end. So uh, I want to thank you for not just joining us today and answering questions and sharing your knowledge, which you know, I, I've come to, uh, to really respect Jill, not just because of cars, but she's also a distance runner. That's how we first connected. I am. Yes, that is why we, that's actually when we first, I, I, what did I, I think I nagged you on an airplane once. Oh, you made me go climb a mountain you, after yeah. I, well, I was recovering from a broken foot. I don't think I knew foot. you at that point no, very well. No, yeah. no, yeah. and I was recovering from a broken foot. I think I like literally went up and down the mountain on my butt because I was yeah. afraid of re-injury. On an empty stomach, too. She yeah. still hates me for that. Anyway, so I, I <laughs> thank you for sharing your knowledge with us here. The, the, the viewers definitely appreciate it. So what I want to say is thank you guys for joining us. A huge thank you to TJ for putting this all together. TJ was the director of this whole thing. And you noticed this was an entirely new format. That is a huge thank you to TJ who put the what, what I'm calling the paquetas, the packages back and forth. <laughs> and thank you for joining us yesterday as well to Scotty Reese for doing some of the packages yes. with us. Uh, Ken Soward and, of course, Craig Cole who joined us. Craig yeah. is always good to, to, to work with. He's had me on his live streams too. 
So I'm going to leave you guys with this. We have a whole host of questions we posed to you, so make sure you answer in the comments below. But also, uh, I want to get some feedback from you on this format, because this was new for us. Not just the format of the live stream that went back and forth from a studio to on, st on, the, on the show floor, right. but also the fact that we're doing this live from the auto show. And notice, I've been listening to you guys, you talked about the cameras, we changed the cameras. The mics, these are old school mics from back in the day. <laughs> so uh, I've really enjoyed this. Yeah, no, I, I, really, really I enjoyed this. this. I was a little bit nervous about telling my husband that some weird man asked me to come up to his room to be on uh, camera, but you know. But we've done weirder <laughs> stuff before. <laughs> This is this is he's, not he's new for us. He's closed me into trunks. Uh, yeah, yeah weird, weird I've stories. I've met your there. sisters. You've I mean, met my yeah, sister, I know the whole yeah. family. At you this you point. have met my husband. Yeah. so I shouldn't say some weird. I've been man. to your house. You have been. You've my been house. to my house. I've been, yeah, well, Absolutely. not your new house, but that's true. But you have to come and visit. Yes. So with that, <laughs> I'm going to say thank you for joining us. This has been a hell of a lot of fun for us. If you couldn't tell yesterday and today, you're going to get the GR Super tomorrow, and if we have enough time, you might get another GLI episode. But we'll see if we can get down there. Uh, and then you're going to get the CLS 53 next week, full first drive review on that. Right. Until we see you next time, most likely back in California with a lot of BMWs, because that's what's coming up next on the show. Bis später. We're good?